Welcome to All Gen Gamers, a podcast for people in video games of all generations. Starring Pete Dore, Happy Console Gamer, Gamester81, and Jason Heine. Hello and welcome back to All Gen Gamers Podcast. This is episode number 47. I'm one of your co-hosts. Uh, I'm really happy to be here too. You know, my name is Jason. Uh, the EMU Review Heine. We're also joined by the Sega Satin himself. <laughs> Mr. Happy Console Gamer. <laughs> Hi, boys. <laughs> Hi. We also got Mr. Retro himself, Gamester81. What's up, John? Not much, man. What's going down? You know, just my zipper. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be one of those podcasts <laughs> <laughs> and guess what we have a treat folks we have quite a treat because we are joined by not one but by two wonderful sexy lovers mm. Mm. we have oh. we have mr tim jumble junkie thanks for joining us tim what's up hey what's up guys hey. <laughs> i feel like i'm gonna sab- sabotage this episode with my Weirdness. Oh, you said that. You said that last time, and it's totally okay. I don't know. Fine. Handle it. (laughs) I'm a bad influence. And then, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Robert Man. And then the guy actually swallowed the monkey. Oh, sorry. Oh, are we on? (laughs) Sorry, just tell the story to this other guy. What's up, everybody? How's it going? It's going down. Doing great. We should probably explain where Pete's at tonight. Yeah, because Pete's not here. He's not here. Oh, yeah, Pete is on a, a date with uh, <laughs> Peter Jackson. He's watching Lord of the Wings. Yeah, yeah. Have you guys so ever dude. seen Lord of the G Strings? Mm. Actually, I have. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! Is it the Frodo Sagans or whatever? Is yeah. that a porno? No, it's Dildo Throbins. Dildo Throbins. <laughs> wait, is this a porno? Because wait a minute, it's so. like a softcore porno movie. It was oh, like on okay. Cinemax. I watched it. It's like a midget. No, uh, no midget. Skin it's, it was just like the, the search for the perfect G String or something like that. It is it is the most pathetic, terrible porn, excuse for a porn movie in history. And it's just like one of those things you hear about. You're like, oh my god, Lord of the G-Strings. I, I gotta see what this is about. And you see it, and it's just a bunch of fucking ugly women and ugly guys in a forest. And you're like, think, fuck, what the hell am I watching? It must have been filmed on like a VHS camera, and they had like oh. Smirnoff and Dildo Throbbins, and I can't remember the other names. I thought it was Gandalf's name. I can't remember. Smirnoff. Was it Smirnoff? Hand off. Get off. <laughs> yeah, because Lord of the Rings, yeah, I don't, that doesn't sound too interesting to me. But Lord of the G-Strings, I'll huh? right, check it out. It's now, Jason, yeah. uh, uh, Jason, you've had a week. Have you seen the movie yet? No, I have not. Fuck it. I... Fuck it. Well, you know what? He, busy. I, I'm busy. I need backup. You know, you guys, you got to let me borrow it or you got to do something. I'll let you borrow it. I got copies of it. I'll let you borrow it. See, but that's what you said last week. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, where, he, never, he, he never called. He never took the initiative and called me and said, "Hey, John, can I get a copy of Lord of the Rings?" D- don't oh, even put know? that. Don't yeah. even put that the, back the on me. Are, the ball's on his court. You don't know? even put that back. I'm not on fucking. Me. I'm not fucking blockbuster. I don't just. Holy fucking... shit! Gamester's mad tonight, eh? Yes. Yeah, he swear. He's on his period. Oh, I am. You have any model? There is rage <laughs> in the cage today. Rage. <laughs> So anyway, That's Pete's right. not joining us tonight, but we have we did a two for one swap. Did two so. for two for two for Tuesday. Thank God, yeah, <laughs> got rid of that Pete Door character for a change. Jesus. So apparently, though, Pete does simply walk into Mordor because that's where he is tonight. Yes. Yeah, yeah. but he'll be, back. he'll be back. He'll be back. He'll be back. He'll be back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Rob is is Marge Simpson here? Is Marge Simpson? I don't think so. I don't think yeah. so. Really? Because no, I, I I swear I thought I jo- called her on Skype no, here. You, you, you might have heard wrong, though, because I think it was probably uh, Gollum getting away from the set. He's kind of sick and tired of the Lord of the Rings scene, so he's okay. he's chilling over at my house for a little while. He was just sort of walking by. Can we hear him real quick? Real quick? <laughs> the Mountain Dew, you have it? Hmm? The Mountain Dew, he wants it, my precious. In the back. Precious, I want the ring, master. <laughs> Mine's oh, better. my God. Mine's That's way better. incredible, dude. That's incredible. Mine's way better than yours, Robert Man. Oh, we got it was a contest there, Tim. <laughs> no, Robert Man will win. He has way more impressions than I do. <laughs> Tim, let's hear your impressions. What do you got? I have. Smeagol. What do you got, Tim? And um, I think that's all I have, actually. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I can do oh like. Oh, do you guys know uh, Bobby me. from Bobby's World? Yeah, oh, it's been oh, a while since I've seen that. Hey, it's Uncle Tab. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Ripley. Yeah, how about we all do our okay? 
how about we all try to do a Jar Jar Binks? Okay. okay. We'll, start, we'll start with Gamester because he's the biggest Star Wars fan. <laughs> Misa, Misa got Jar Jar Binks. Monsters out there. No power in here. Oh, what's the we gonna do? He wins. Fuck, hey, that's good. <laughs> Jumble Junkie, you're up. Misa Jar Jar Binks. Misa, your humble servant. Misa, oh. annoying. Misa, not in the movies anymore. <laughs> Robert Mann, you're up. <laughs> okay, he wins. Holy shit, he that's wins. good. Yeah, I can't even follow. I, I can't be that. Come on, Jason, do one. I haven't even seen those those three episodes, so I don't. What? Mm. What? Yeah, yeah, What's I'll do mine. I'm just joking. Oh my yeah. god, yeah, Jason, yeah, there's mine. this invention called television. <laughs> I don't yeah. know really what cool. it is. Don't yell at me. I remember. I remember when I saw the movie. I, I would practice Jar Jar Binks every night when I was laid in bed naked, and this is what I came up with. I think it's pretty good. So you better watch out, Rob. Hey, it's Jar Jar Binks. Hey, guys. That's pretty good, eh? That was excellent. <laughs> that sounded like Jar-Jar guy incognito. Was. I'd always be in bed naked at late at night doing that. I don't know. It's kind of exciting. For me. <laughs> <laughs> Until my father walked in. Hey, John. I have a serious question, uh, Gamester John. Yes. If this is too personal, then I'm sorry. But have you ever done any like Star Wars role playing, like, like sexually? Role playing? Yeah, uh, we definitely had the Slave Leia once. Yes, definitely. You dressed up as Slave Leia. It was I dressed up like Slave Leia. Yeah, absolutely. Have and you and she Heine was, was Java? Like, it was yeah, awesome. I, I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. Did yeah, Heine Jason. ever have like uh, like lightsaber fights with you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We just we just Ooh. called it dummy sticks. But yeah, it was fun. <laughs> crossing swords. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, I hear I hear Mini Poutine back there. I hear oh, that's, Mini. that's Mini Man right there. Hey 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 hey, Mini Man, can you say Poutine? Poutine. Yes. You say it again. Poutine. Yeah, good job, buddy. Who's 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 on Daddy's shoulder? Who's in the picture on Dad's shoulder? Mother Man. Yeah, that's right. It is Mother Man. Good right? job, buddy. What? Yeah, there's a red light on that. That's a microphone. You're talking to uh, thousands of people around the world right now. Yeah. I think I just shit myself. <laughs> Poutine. 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 Oh my god. That's you know cute. that kid's growing up in Canada, right? Yeah. <laughs> as long as he doesn't write the place. What's with that, dude? The riots and shit going up there? Oh my god. What? What's that? I heard the riots? The Canadian riots, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That? Dude, seriously? People stop hey. that. Why are they hey, doing oh. that? Jason or uh, Johnny, I saw you making out with that chick in the street in the riots. Yeah, you know, you know what's so fucking retarded? Somebody actually wrote to me and said, "Hey, was that you and your girlfriend?" I knew it was serious. I'm like, um, um, uh, no. I'm like, that doesn't even look like me. For fuck's sake, that wasn't my girlfriend. That was my sister. That was some other loser. That's my cousin, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> no, 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 no it's, it's so funny that um, we all watched the game last week and we lost. And I remember I did a status update and I said, you done goofed Canucks. And I was over it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I put it on the TV. Actually, a friend of mine was downtown and he wasn't drinking, which is a good idea. And I get a text from him and he's like, oh, so I'm, I'm heading back. I said, oh, how was it? He's like, oh, man, it's getting ugly down here. I'm like. What do you mean ugly? Like, like yeah, everybody has to understand back in 94 when the Stanley, like, you know, we just stand like a riot then when we didn't win. It's just so we're fucking losers in the city. But, um, James, what are you fucking eating over there? What? Nothing. Well, McDonald's, Mickey D's, go ahead. Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. You got yeah. your regular pizza going? No, 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 listen, listen. They have chicken what? nuggets, right? They have chicken McNuggets. Well, they just came out what? with chicken McBites. What? Oh my! This is no shit. Mm-mm. Chicken McBites are like popcorn chicken. Wow! And they're awesome. And my dad Jason used to say, to- "My dad used to say that the chicken nuggets are like kangaroo meat." Oh, well, you know, well, you know, like <laughs> ten years ago, they're like, "Now we make them with all white meat," and we're like, "Wait yeah. a minute, what the fuck did they make them with before?" <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Johnny, so continue. The green is people. <laughs> it's people. <laughs> so, um. So, yeah, so I said to this guy, like, what do you mean it's getting ugly? He's like, yeah, some Boston Bruins fan just got KO'd in front of the Moxie, which is like a restaurant. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, and he's like, yeah, they're starting to, like, there's fires going on. I'm like, fires? I'm like, and so I wrote to him, riot? Question mark. He's like, yeah. I'm like, really? 
So I flipped on the fucking news and I see, like, what's so fucking retarded about Vancouver is they lose a hockey game, no big deal. But, you know, go smash their city up. Don't smash our own city up, you dumb fucking apes. That, that's like, what I'm like, saying. That's what I can't understand. Why? Yeah. Boston's really nice, though. <laughs> well, you know, I got nothing to get. I got nothing against Boston winning. Good for you. They were a better team. They won. They fucking kicked our asses. We sucked. And like you guys was. had it, too. You guys had it the series, too. Weren't you guys up like yeah. 3-1? Yeah. Of course. But we're the Canucks. We choke. The you know, choke. Like yeah. Oh, we're choking the pressure. But, you know, like... I just couldn't believe it. I sat there watching it all night and I'm like, you dumb idiots. And everybody's drunk and they're, they're smashing things through like Sears' window and stuff like that, you know? And there's a thousand people with fucking cell phones videotaping them at all. All these people have been busted. They're all, all in the news yep. now crying, going, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to light that cop car on fire. <laughs> You know, I needed a new dryer. <laughs> I, I, saw, I know, they're pathetic. I saw the dude so, with a gun to the back of the guy's head that set the police car on fire. Yeah, that totally happened, right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I think, yeah. Rob, what, what's your take on it? Like, I, I will personally say my piece on it is that I'm I'm embarrassed for, about Vancouver. Like, like it's such a so, fucking sore losing okay. city. Like, get it over. You know what? what here's, here's how it went down for me. I watched the first two periods of the game. I turned it off. I put my iPhone app up, and I was playing with Orin, my kid there. We were just playing and, and whatever. And as soon as the game was over, my phone went bleep, bleep, and I saw the final score and I was like, oh, that sucks. Turned off my phone, went over to London Drugs and bought He-Man Masters of the Universe season one on DVD to make awesome. myself feel better. And I was over it. That was it. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to watch something that made me feel good. But on the way home, stopped by the cold beer, walk in. They got a big screen TV in there with the news. And there was the, the, the rioting and the people fighting and the, and the fires. And I just looked at the screen. I looked at the lady behind the counter and I said, tonight we're going to party like it's 1994. And I went home. <laughs> you should have gotten Lord of the uh, G-Strings. I heard that um, really gets your mind off. That, 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 that's a good, good family-friendly movie, that. That's absolutely uh, wonderful. <laughs> <family entertainment. laughs> Still those sagging. You know, it's, it's kind of irony in it all is like the whole lo- uh, Winter Olympics. You guys are like, we're a peaceful, you know, peaceful city, which you guys are. You know, and yeah. it's, it's a really a shame that, that well, you have a, a few is, hooligans or whatever that, you know, as right. the mayor said, you know, so it's too bad. Well, that, that and my take on it is this. I was I was horrified and I was embarrassed because one, I thought we learned from 1994 and two, I thought we learned from the Olympics in this city that we are an international stage and the world is watching. And that honestly, we won some dignity and we won some points from the Olympics for hosting what has been yep. renowned as one of the best Olympics ever with the most positive atmosphere the most safe and fun atmosphere ever and then just a couple years later we crap it all down the freaking drain over the stanley freaking cup mm-hmm. i know we smash wow. our own city do you know what I'm the great so, thing is they're, 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 yeah i'm so embarrassed, embarrassed. it's yeah. just it's embarrassing and to be honest can i just say something to the yeah. to, to the states to the rest of canada to the world to everyone that has seen that and decided to slander this city OK, That's that was a small handful of idiots who weren't even hockey fans that premeditated it due to the number of people that were going down. And that has been officially documented in the news. It was a small handful of people that were intent on doing it, whether we won or lost. That's not yeah. our city. That's the idiots. There's morons everywhere. There's morons awesome. everywhere. We, we got we got our share in the States, too. Don't we? <laughs> you know, yeah, so. Who, me? Yeah, but I just watched, you know, just um, maybe because so everybody's seen the picture of that guy and the girl making out in the riots there, right? That's become a bit of a famous picture. Yeah. And uh, the funny thing about that is, I actually saw some video today. What happened is, everybody's like, oh, look at the lovers in the middle of the riot. No, that girl is actually totally injured. And what actually happened is, all the riot police is coming down, and they, this, two, this couple couldn't get out of the way, and the fucking riot police just started beating them. There's actual video of it. You can see the overhead. Wow. And they fall down, and the, the right police gets everybody out of the way, and they're laying there. And then somebody took that photo as he reached down to kiss his, his girlfriend. Did hmm. we all just get along? I know. I know. I know. When I first saw that picture, I was like, oh, you know, make love, not war. I'm like, that's a pretty cool photo. And then you find out what really happened. She's like, oh, she's right actually their ass beaten. Yeah, that sucks. So, yeah, whatever. We were all over. But, you know, the great, the good news is, Ten thousand people went downtown the next day and cleaned up. So yeah, that was no, that's pretty cool. Nice. And the, you know, the news does jerseys. You don't hear that on the news, though. That the good thing, you know, positive at all. You know, you yeah. hear the bad, of course. So you know, like the blowing up cars and shit. That's cool. You know, that's exciting. <laughs> you know, it's twisted metal I, 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 shit. Yeah. 
Yeah. I was watching it and I was just like, this is unbelievable. I can't believe it. What would happen in the uh, the Olympics if the Canada Canada lost to the P P on me. P on me more, more, more P. He turned into a robot. That's just Johnny right there. What's going Johnny on? the robot? What he's, he's what he's doing is he's pl- he's plugging going. it into an Atari twenty six hundred, and then <laughs> he's got his voice box action going. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're talking about, Mister Bon Jovi or something, Mister Roboto. <laughs> I used to smoke eighty five bags a day. Now I watch long cut my smoking in half. Yum, 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 yum. Is it still doing it? No, you're good. No, you're no, good. Stop, you're good. No. It's kind of Tron like. It's kind of yeah. It was cool. It was cool. Destroy the human race. <laughs> Um, End of line. <laughs> so he's still having sex with his Dalek. I love it. <laughs> now, nor, uh, now on gaming news, you guys pick up the new Zelda or what? Yeah, three yes. Hell's yeah! Oh, let's talk about it then. Let's talk about okay. it. I haven't picked it up yet. Jumble, <laughs> did you buy it? I bought Duke. Oh, me too. Hey, we can a- talk about that. Okay, we'll talk about that after. For sure. Mm. So, Jason, J- Jason, you'll love this story. Okay. I um, you'll love this story. You'll fucking love it. Oh, I'm it's nude. Not- I'm nude, and I can't wait. Perfect. Party. <laughs> so about two months ago, I'm in EB Games, and uh, everybody's like, "Oh, pre-order Zelda because you'll get your poster." I'm like, "Fucking okay, cool." And um, and I didn't give a, give a shit about a poster, but they're like, "Yeah, you pre-order, you get a free poster." I'm like, uh, "Okay, I'm in. I'm I'll, I'll I'm down with that." So the day comes out, Sunday. I go down to pick it up. I walk in, they're like, oh, you got a pre-order because, you know, there's not many copies of the game. I'm like, I sure do. So I put down my pre-order and bring it to the, to the, you know, the counter. I'm like, oh, yeah, and uh, obviously for pre-ordering it's the, uh, the poster as well. They're like, oh, um, we don't have any of the posters. Um, what? I'm, a, I'm like, huh? I'm, a, I'm standing there and I'm just like... And the girl, assholes. I've been beat yeah. by this, this girl. She's like, did you want a poster? I'm like, well, yeah, I pre-ordered it to get the poster because that's what comes with it. She's like, so you wanted the poster? <laughs> no, bitch. I wanted no, a- no, oh, God. Open- I, oh, I said God. I want the poster twice because I'm an idiot who actually doesn't want it. My, my, my girlfriend is laughing about it. We get back in the car. She's like, you, you, so you want the poster? She kept saying that to me. I'm like, so the guy, so the guy, one of the, the, the fat pieces of shit back in the bag is like, oh, yo, you know, we had 12 pre-orders and only six posters came in. And I'm just like thinking Bullshit. about it. And Employees I just said, took them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what and I just said to myself, "I'm like, this is the story of EB Games. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is the mm-hmm. story of EB Games." And I was just, I was like, "I'm leaving now." Because I was like, on the car, and I said to the girlfriend, "I said, you know, if I fucking exploded, because I'm actually a very nice person, <laughs> but if somebody pisses me off, I can be a fucking cunt, and I want it to be a fucking cunt." I just want to say, you fucking fat piece of shit. This always happens when I, I, I want to really stick it to them. Say, this always happens with you fucking cunts. So I don't shop at those places because they're ridiculous. Yeah. They always pull shit like that. Okay. Yeah. Where, Tim, where else can, where do you shop then? Um, see, over here, we just use Amazon. Um, yeah. See, I try, we have a pretty good independent music store uh, up, up in New England. So I can usually find new brand new games like five to $10 cheaper on release huh. day. So that's where I had to go. And um, I don't know. I See, I, I, had a, I had an instance where I wanted to pick up Dark Cloud. It was like used for like five bucks at, at GameStop. Yeah. The kid looks at it and goes, oh, we don't have it and throws the case in the, the trash. And I'm like, bull fucking shit <laughs> for five dollars Dark Cloud. This guy's going to snag it. So I guarantee. So we go back about a half hour later. It's out of the trash can. <laughs> what a fucking con. Oh, yeah. What a bullshit. That was, that was the final straw for me. And then they, the whole like gutted copies and they won't sell it to you for used even though it's clearly opened and it's used uh-huh. well, I, and let's, let, let's point out what is the distinctifying factor of a used game it has been opened whether it's been played or not it's yeah. opened and if they're opening that game it's no longer new it's you like buy a, car. a brand new car yeah yeah, yeah exactly you buy a car take off a lot it's used yeah. now did yep. you did you guys hear about the lawsuit they ended up facing at gamestop because mm-hmm. of uh limited edition games with those download codes they were opening the gut copy, and then the staff were taking the cards with the download codes, writing down the code, going home and redeeming it. So you bought wow. your brand new limited edition one, and when you put in your codes for the extra content, you got bupkis. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's bullshit. It doesn't surprise me at all. Doesn't they surprise got me. sued over that shit because they were basically stealing yeah. all the good stuff. Uh, so they could buy the standard edition, 
and then get all the limited content for free and screw out somebody who paid for it. It's bullshit like, to me. Is like it is all the limited edition stuff, you all the cool like freebie shit is all through EB or GameStop. Like you can't go anywhere else to get all that cool stuff. Just really unfortunate. <laughs> what, what are you guys talking about? about? Yeah. What do you guys talk about the used games? When you get a used game, you have to put a password in to, to play online and shit. What do you guys think about that? I know a lot of companies are doing that now, right? Well, you can buy the passes now, which is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, but stupid. It's like it is dumb. It's, just, it's stupid. You know what, though? At the same time, if you look at it, uh, a company like Bioware, who is doing that with the uh, the the Cerberus accesses that you have to get with each game, they sell the game once at EB, and Bioware gets the money from that sale. When it sells pre-owned, which is more often what happens, Bioware gets exactly jack and shit and jack left town. And so they're yeah. left without any fucking money on the resells. So they're just trying to recoup some of those losses so they can make some money. I understand the the reason behind it, but you look at music and, and like use music CDs, you know, the music industry doesn't do make shit from that. That's never been an issue for them. You know, books, use books. So you think the author gets commission or you know royalty on a, on a used book sale no exactly. yeah, but used book sales do not bring in anywhere near as much money in this day and age as used video game sales do and that used video game sales is a massive chunk of the pie the, the music industry had to suck it up and that's why concerts are so goddamn expensive now because t-shirt sales and concerts is where the artists make their money so everyone free distributes their shit on the internet mm-hmm. so the, the video game industry is one of the last bastions of, of uh, and, and they're losing money through piracy, and now they're losing it through pre-owned game sales. So if, I, I understand why they're doing it too, and at the same time, they're in a lot harder position than bookstores or uh, like authors and, and musicians. So I Yeah, I have a hard time believing that EA is hurting for money or Bioware Bio is hurting for money, though. You know, they're billions. billions. It's a billion-dollar industry. Yeah. You know, I just, I don't know. It's frustrating. So- uh, just getting back to it, I I didn't even fucking want the poster. It was just the symbolization of it, you know. I want to. It was the, it was the, the principle. Yeah, the yeah principle. principle well. I don't even need the poster. I could go on fucking eBay and buy the poster. I don't care. I don't need it. I just hate those cunts with a passion. Oh, and well, I'm God. as angry as Jason was. I'm as angry oh, as yeah. Jason was because I just hate the smugglers. I hate them saying, "If you pre-order the game, you get a poster." Don't. And then, oh, sorry, we only got six posters for 12 pre-orders. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it's your fault. I mean, it's just, I can't tell you how many times I've gone into GameStop, and yeah. I go to buy a new game, yeah. and they pull out a fucking open case, and a disc, and a little sleeve in the back, and, and they put it in there. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. No way. What are, what are you doing? They're like, well, this is, uh, this is our last uh, uh, case. They say that to me all the fucking time. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. no, I want a fucking sealed one. Here's great, There's great DLC example. codes in there. Great example. I remember for Rob's birthday. This is this is about five years ago. You'll remember it, Rob. Remember? Oh, I, I, I was going to ask you to tell this story. I went in and I I, I got you. I pre-ordered Portrait of Ruin. Was that, was that correct? Yeah, Sylvania Portrait of Ruin. Yes, yeah. and it and it came with a really nice pre-order thing. It came with an art book and some a CD, some all this bullshit. Uh, if you pre-ordered it, you would get this. So I walk in, I, I got, so I pre ordered just for Rob and uh, I walk in the dates, you know, gets released and they call me up and like, Oh, can you, can you be down to pick it up? I said, yeah, actually, yeah, I said, I'll be down tomorrow because I'm working today. Cause you know, some people actually have jobs. You know what I mean? Like I can't come down when exactly when you say, I said, I'll be down tomorrow. Oh, okay, cool. I said, pre order still there. No problem. I get down there. So I'm like, okay. Um, I, I get the game. I'm like, Oh yeah. And the pre order bonus as well. Oh, we don't have any pre-order bonuses. And Rob, you remember that fucking ugly-looking woman? Jane Louise. <laughs> yeah, she didn't talk like this. I, okay, <laughs> she looked. She looked like her face had been mashed into an ugly tree and then drowned in a bucket of pig slop. Yeah, mm. she, damn, that she, ugly. She, and she, she had the ugly tree and hit every branch on the way down, <laughs> and then it fell on her. <laughs> I, 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 okay, so I'm standing there. She's like, "We don't have any." I'm like, "What do you mean?" I said, "I pre-ordered this." Two months ago, for my friend's birthday, to get that pre or you know that pre order you know, bonus because he's a big Castlevania fan. Oh well, we don't have any left now. I'm like, what do you mean you don't have any left? Every pre order should get one of these. Well, we, we we don't have any, and she starts getting nervous because I'm not leaving and I'm an agitated customer, you know. And uh, she's she's like, I'll, I'll have a look. So she went and she brings back a fucking PSP cover for what the fuck was that game that um. Metal Gear game at the time. 
the, oh, do you remember what's uh, what Yeah, the Metal Gear Portable Ops, the the plastic uh, armor yeah. case from the PSP. She's like, oh, would you, would you would you like this instead? I'm like, I'll take it, but I don't want it. <laughs> I'm like, I was so mad. And then the big load of bullshit is that Rob, about I, you know, about, was that six months later, walked into an EB and came out with two of them and gave me one. No, I went in three days later and talked to the manager because I know the staff at that one. And I said, hey, uh, the guy's name was Sean. I'm like, Sean, I need to tell you a little story. My buddy came in here and he hasn't shopped at a game at an EB Games GameStop in about a couple of years because of the exact shit I'm about to tell you about. Okay. And he pre-ordered something for me for my birthday. And Sean's starting to sweat. And I said, and it was supposed to come with that Castlevania pre-order kit. And that was supposed to be for my birthday. And he didn't get it. And he pre-ordered it two months ago. So I think you need to fix this. And he said, uh, I'll see what I can do. I said, no, you need to fix this and you need to do it now. It's fucking anarchy. And he phoned yeah. every store in the district until he found two of the kits and he got both of them sent over. So I and kept one and I gave one to John. Now, now here, here. Okay. This is the point that I want to make about this as well as that. It's awesome that Rob knows everybody in there and was able to make that happen. But what a load of shit that you have to know somebody in there to get this stuff. You have yeah, to have absolutely. the right in. You have oh, to be, you know, fucking dating those faggots, you know, yeah. to be able to fucking get that. It was such a load of shit. Oh, I have to Rob be in. I, I know. I have to hang in the goddamn store with these losers and listen to their, you know, blabber about fucking video game talk. They don't even know what they're talking about. Well, yeah, but they, the they talk as loud as, like, they do it purposely so you can hear them. Yeah. And they try to. They'll, they'll try to one up you with something every time they try to talk do you have to any, you. Do you have any stories, Tim? Because we all have stories about that. I'd like to hear something that you know. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I, I still remember I was going in and I was looking uh, for Arcana Heart, and like I knew I think it was Atlas. I can't remember who put it out, but we just got on this discussion about Atlas and stuff. And he's trying to like one up me on all these Atlas titles. And I'll be the first to admit I don't really know a whole lot about JRPGs or you know any of that stuff. Like I play a handful, like you know Persona Four and stuff, but yeah. But he was like purposely like trying to one up me, and then he tries to get his buddies involved. God. And he goes, "Oh, this guy doesn't know this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds just like him. Yeah. Uh, or when yeah. you bring up a game you want to play, and they make a comment about it about how it sucks, mm. and I'm like, "I don't care. I want to play it." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> My prerogative. I hate those. I, mean, I, I, I don't want to knock. I'm not n- knocking all of EB or GameStop. You know, I'm not knocking all the guys and girls who work there. There's some good people who work there. Why is it all, they all, all the fucking losers work at all the ones I go to? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what it seems like to me. You know, I don't want and Rob. The thing is, I don't want to get along with those people because I hate them. I yeah. hate going there. I hate well, the experience. There's different breeds of gamers, though, I think. Yeah. I've got to be honest with you. The only reason that I, I have that kind of an in isn't because I hang out there all the bloody time. It's because, as you know, John Johnny, for a while there, I did try to get rehired with them after many years after I had been working for them. Yeah. And for some reason, my file in their personnel file said no for rehire. And I, seemed, I remember the story that there was a girl that was stealing my shifts. I couldn't go in to get my, my shifts every week, my schedule. So I kept phoning the store and asking. She kept saying, oh, there, there's no hours. There's no hours for you. And I finally went in and sat down with the manager, and he said, yeah, where have you been the last two weeks? She's been covering all your shifts. Oh. Luckily, and we have to let you go now. You're fired. Oh. Wow. Sucks. And never let me give my side of the story. And when I went to get rehired again, their files just said no rehire. Every manager, every district manager, and every assistant manager in the Lower Mainland wrote a letter of reference for me to EB Games to try and get me reinstated with the company. They turned them all down. I want the fucking CEO on the podcast now. So, so what? No, that's okay. Because, but that got me the political in that I had with the uh, with GameStop. I'm not in there every day. I don't go in there and hang out with them. But they know that I, I am known to them. So, <laughs> so that yeah. case in point. I phoned them when I got my 60 gig PS3 and uh, I, I said, do you guys, and a few years ago, so they're well and truly long gone. Asked if they had a refurb hanging around. They said, we have one actually right now. And I said, I will be there in 10 minutes. Got in the car, screeched over there. Johnny will tell you it's literally a five minute drive, especially with the speed I was going. Walked into the store, went up to the till, said, I'm here to pick up my PS3. And the guy was like almost in tears and he's looking at me and he's like, 
Um, I'll get the manager. <laughs> the manager comes out and he's like, uh, hi. Yeah. Um, we're really sorry, but when you phoned, someone was at the till buying it. Hmm. And we don't have it now. That's a tough wow. situation, though. That's hard. Yeah, it is a tough situation. They should have told you but that. Hey, said, someone's uh, buying it. Uh, we got someone that's actually like in a transaction right now. Yeah. Or, you know, that's what yeah. they should have said. Just be, hey, save your time. Don't come down. You know, so, someone's buying it right now. So again, I looked them in the eyes and I said, fix this. <laughs> and they said, well, I, I don't know what we can do. I said, I'm pretty sure that uh, Galia, the district manager, will find a way to fix this. So either she can fix it or you can fix it now. And I said, you have my number in the system. If I don't hear in a day, I'll be talking to head office. Don Colleone over here. Know, next day, they phoned me up. It's so funny about shit like this. I love it. <laughs> He's the next a day, fucking 60 gig. The next day, they phoned me up. They had found one in Vernon. And we're having an overnight express shipped on the pretense that it was a uh, warranty replacement for a very important customer. Well, at least they took care of the situation. For he he, he made them a knock where they couldn't refuse. Yeah. But, but again, <laughs> I have to agree with Johnny on this. It's bullshit that I have to know the inner workings of their political structure in order to get decent service from them. Fucking retarded. Yeah. Okay. Any customer should have the same service without having to make all the threats and anger. Yeah. Anytime they should be bending over backwards for you because you are who they cater to. Yeah. yeah. Well, did we ever get to a big fucking bashing of EB Games, eh? We're talking no, about but, you know, I think Johnny, like you said before, though, like we're not bashing the people necessarily. Every person that works there, uh, we're just we're bashing the situations we've gone through. You know, I've had some good experiences there. We've had some bad experiences there. But the thing about Game GameStop is and EB Games is they're so big that they've yeah. kind of lost sight of their consumer. You know, yeah. I'm afraid. And, you know, they're getting rid of a lot of the, they got rid of the retro games. They're getting rid of uh, Game Boy Advance games, GameCube games, you know. So it's like, you know, my prediction is like in 10 years, it's going to be like Blockbuster. They're going to be gone. Oh, they'll be yeah. toast. Yeah. 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 They're going to be gone because, you know, the, the industry is changing. It's all going to be DLC. And unfortunately, it's going to be DLC. You know, it's going to be download. Uh, yeah. It's kind of the direction the gaming go- game is going, you know, that, that will get that will eliminate the whole used game thing that we talked about, too. Unfortunately. Well, I think there will still be a home for vintage shops, and I think those are going to become more prevalent over the next 10 years, no, but they're going to be like antique stores. They are actually going to become high-profile you know, kinds of shops. Yeah. yeah. So let's get into Zelda real quick, then. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Let's, let's, let's hop it on up a little. Zelda 95% who? of bashing, and 5% will do talking about the new Zelda. <laughs> 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 We're going to sound like most reviewers out there. Horrible. Um, so, how about Rob? What did you think of the game? Okay, I went down and picked it up on launch day, and I was very, very excited. I even bought the uh, 3DS uh, armor, Zelda themed. Uh, put that on there. Popped it in, and when the music started, the nostalgia wave hit for sure. Because as we know, Nintendo was brilliant at tugging those heartstrings. Um, mm-hmm. And I watched the whole opening. I had to turn the 3D down to about half because it was it was pretty intense. But at about half level, it was it was just perfect. The the upgraded graphics looked fantastic. So I started my new game, went through the whole opening with Navi flying through and her flying through the Kokiri village. Hey, listen. It was hey, all- listen. <laughs> I did not miss that, but the, the flying through was nice in 3D. It was really, really good, really smooth. Uh the gyroscope looking around is fantastic. Um uh, I think there's gonna be a lot of times though that I'm gonna spend with the 3D off. Yes. So it's the 3D isn't the selling point on this game to me. It's the upgraded graphics. They are gorgeous. Right. They look fantastic in the portability, of course, but the 3D at times, not so great. Mm. That's, How's that's, the dual that's, screen? That's, oh, the, the, the screen how, menu system is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Very oh, useful. That's it. So I just want to say exactly what you're saying about the 3D. Is the 3D, like, if you're holding the screen, the 3D looks amazing. But if you have to move, your hands, which you are going to do for an action RPG, you're, it goes all distorted for it, you know? And it's very hard to adjust to that. So it's not that my eyes can't handle 3D or they were bleeding or any of that crap. <laughs> um, it's just that you're moving the screen, it's distorting on you because the 3D you can't hold it in one spot. You know, maybe if you get a goddamn stand with a clip and you want to clip it on and you have a clip for your head so your head doesn't move, you're going to have a great time. 
Okay. Like the R zone. Pretty yeah, well, but <laughs> I, 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 I want to chime in, Rob, because the, that's the bit I want to say is that w- the thing I love about this game, everything that Rob said, but when you're looking around in 3D, just say you're in a, a dungeon and you, you want to look up at the ceiling, you actually lift your 3DS up into the air and you're actually looking up at the ceiling in the game. And uh, it's good. I like it. Rob had a funny story that happened to him. Where you like, hey, you, you said you're laying in bed with the uh, oh, like, bear falling was- asleep. You're trying to play um, really quietly or something? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got my head, I've got my big old skull candy headphones on, and I'm playing it. And I tried to do the first person look around, and so I went into first person view mode, and I'm sort of waiting, and I'm like, oh, how? I moved the thumbsticks, and it moved a little bit there, and then I moved the DA, the 3DS, and the camera shift is like, oh, it's really cool. So I went to look over to the left and practically smack my wife in the face with my 3ds oh, oh geez sorry but sorry i was looking around yeah, was yeah. <laughs> she was sleeping uh that's until hilarious then. uh but yeah but, but, but game's good game's good oh the game is is beautiful so i'm very happy with it and if this is what i can look forward to with Mega Man 3ds i'm excited yeah you know the, actually the review i thought that was really good was brian's review in game deals i went down there for a bit today and i said oh and he's sitting there playing on the couch when i walk and i'm like oh so i sit down and i'm like how you liking it and he's like and he's a huge zelda fan he's like that's yeah, so we're of time and i'm like so he's like it's a good remake he's like but well, i'm playing it he's like and he's like i've been there done that before he said it's not a bad thing but i've been there done that and it's funny playing it, it's like oh i kind of remember this and i can't remember that but you kind of are you, you're playing a game again so just just so you guys know that, you know, I, it's good. It's good times. Like, if you like the green of time, go and buy it. This end do you think they should have like messed around with the ending or made an alternative ending or beginning? Or do you think just oh, that, that would have been pissed off the fanboys? No, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't yeah. mess with rage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nerd rage. They changed it with the dungeon, and you know, it's like three dungeons now instead of four. Wait, four <laughs> it's like Spielberg with the walkie talkies. Oh, don't get me started. That pissed me off still. <laughs> now oh. they've replaced all the guns with walkie talkies. <laughs> do you guys think that they should make more like ports from the N64 into the 3DS, like this game? And if so, no. what games would you like to see? Well, you already Wave have Star Race? Fox. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Star Fox, but yeah. They're, Wave they're Race would be cool. Yeah, please bring Wave, Wave Race. I'd love that. Wave Race would have been awesome. Mischief yeah. Makers. Superman 64 would have been sweet. <laughs> Superman oh, like you really him. <laughs> my, my, my wife is chiming in with Shadowgate 64. I was kidding. Are you guys going to get that? Or Ocarina of Time? Who else got it? Nobody? Yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it. I haven't got it yet, but I'll get it for sure. Right. He's not going to buy it then. He hates it. He hates Zelda. Huh? He'll get a headache yeah. playing it. His eyes will start John, bleeding. John my, eyes, that. my eyes will bleed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, John, when John was out here, like we were drinking one night and he's like, Hey, I got something to tell you. And I'm like, what? what is that game straight one? He's like, don't tell anybody, but I hate Zelda. It's so <laughs> gay. <laughs> <laughs> I think they should do the CDI versions on the 3DS. That'd be awesome. <laughs> those are the best. I, I, don't, I don't care what anybody says. Those are the best versions. <laughs> I can walk like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> I also saw some security footage from the uh, from the last uh, the last packs there, and uh, when when Gamester was was demoing the 3DS, you remember that scene at the end of uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark when they yeah, opened the ark? <laughs> yeah, his head crushed, and all of his eyes ran out the front of his face. It was frightening. <laughs> so I think they need to put that in the medical he warnings. Hates, yeah, and I Gamester hates them. Zelda. Oh, Warning: hates Playing the 3DS will will be like opening the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He can't stand it. So <laughs> yeah. question he'll never for buy you it. Guys. Like, yeah, yeah, I'll buy the new Zelda. Don't worry, guys. And he's like, fucking Zelda sucks. Yeah, I'm gonna buy it, she. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bend it right over my motherfucking knee, she. <laughs> this is great. Let's let's get into the next topic. And Jason and Mr. Jumble Junkie, you guys can talk fully about a certain little game. What game would that be? Well, well, before before we get into that. Uh, Tim, I heard you say uh, you have a question for us. I'd like to get yes, to that. Yes, since I don't have a Nintendo 3DS, is the Ocarina of Time, even though I played it a bazillion, gazillion times, is it ultimately worth grabbing a no, 3DS no, just for that? No. Okay. No. No. Thank you. Thank you. It, it, it's good. Like, if you <laughs> have a 3DS, you want a cool game, you're sad, but is it worth the entire buy? No, I think, I don't know. If if, if you played it a gazillion times, what the hell? it's like playing it again. It's going to be good. It looks better. 
but it's a Zelda Ocarina of Time again. Did, no, I've did, got did a, you guys, did you, I'm sorry, you're right. did you get uh, the CD with it too? Wasn't there like yeah, a CD? That yes, I, well, you had to Soundtrack. you had to go online to Club Nintendo, register your copy, and if you were within the first, I don't know, like 500 people or whatever, they will send you a free 50 track soundtrack that includes previously unreleased music that was composed for Ocarina of Time. Uh, that was never used in the original game, as well as a booklet full of the revamped character design concept work. Wow. Hi. So, in other words, you can download it online for free. So, uh, later you will be able to download that online for free. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, personally, I have a 3DS because, and, and I'm, I'm actually, I, I'm, I'm going to just grind the axe real quick on this one, just real quick, and I'll get it out of the way. So angry. Uh, oh, no, no, just the e store launched, Rough. and when the e store launched, they were supposed to launch. Mega Man Legends 3 prototype version. It was supposed to be the first piece of software available. Uh, so for my birthday, I got the 3DS in the Mega Man Blue. Sexy! And I checked it out, and I, I, I wanted my first game on that to be Mega Man Legends prototype. And uh, the store has been released. And it's not there. And there's no word from Capcom. Mm. They're actually quite avoiding the subject uh, a lot. So, yeah. i um, sad but it's my party and i cry if i want to <laughs> dance <Skippy. laughs> but i do however have a kick-ass 3ds and i've got ocarina of time to enjoy again for the first time for the last time for the next time it's excellent hey rob did you get uh excite bike the free excite bike download have you in trying to did you get that too yeah, i didn't know sure it was did. free i didn't know yeah, it was free, free. To go get yeah. that. up until the end of the month it's free yeah well then i better get that soon it's, yeah, it's cool. It's not bad. The three D cool. is, is, is a bit of a novelty, but it works. Yeah, you know, it's, it works. It's fine. It works. See, it's an old school game. I don't know what I was expecting from them, but I thought they did pretty good. It's interesting that they're taking the old school games and making them three D ish. You know, it's kind of interesting. Well, I heard one of the first uh, demos that they did for the three DS was a bunch of eight bit games, including Mega Man Two. Now, if they re released Mega Man Two, where the parallax was in that three D depth of field, I would be so excited. <laughs> yeah, busting so, at the no, seams. I, I don't know. Do you know, I hate to say this. I don't know if I like the 3D or not. And it's not that my eyes can't handle it. It's not a, one of those bullshit things. I get headaches. These terrible headaches. <laughs> many headaches. You know, I just, I hate it when I move the screen. Which if you're playing, it's like playing a controller and you don't move the controller. Like, it looks great and you're looking at, oh, it's nice. But once you start actually playing and going, whoa, get away from me, you monster. And you oh, the 3 is distorting. Here's, 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 here's a, a Here's the deal, though. With this, the conversation that Johnny and I had up in the bar when I told him I hate Zelda, he yeah. actually told me in return, he says, Game Street 1, I hate Nintendo. <laughs> fucking hate yeah. Nintendo. Fucking I said, hate what? Respect. Like, hate what? Them. Donnie, what did you say? He's like, fucking 3DS fucking sucks dick. Hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. 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 You know, the, the other piece of security footage you guys missed from E3 was uh, after the Nintendo, or not E3, from, uh, from, from the last PAX, after, the, uh, after the, the Nintendo press conference and everything, uh, Miyamoto was being escorted out the back door and a shadowy figure came running down the hall, punched out the security guards, pushed over Miyamoto, dropped his pants and teabagged in his mouth, and that was Johnny. <laughs> I swear, I, I keep telling you, but it wasn't me, honestly. Salty. <laughs> Miyamoto did not gargle Johnny's balls, but he did. He didn't gargle in the, he didn't gargle in the way I wanted him to. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, so I, I'm still, I'm still, I want to play some more 3D games. I want more software. I want to make, I want to play RPGs in 3D. That's what I want to do next. Oh, that'd be awesome. It's coming. I want to see like a, a really good cell shaded. 3D like Dragon Quest 8. I want to see that kind of a game. You will. We will. We will. But it will be. It'll take, take some time. Take another year or so. But we'll we'll get floods of that so, shit. So now, without further ado, mm. Jason and Tim would like to discuss balls of steel. Balls of steel. Yeah, Tim. What? Well, you want to hit it up first. You want to go ahead and give your yeah. Because uh... I had the console experience, and I know you, I saw you play on your stream the PC experience, which looked a little bit more appealing than the console experience. So, um, so I, this was obviously going to be a day one purchase for me. Besides Marvel's Capcom Three, this was my most anticipated game of 2011. Uh, so growing up, big Duke fan. Obviously, played the originals on my old 386, and then when Duke 3D came out, it was like you know spooging all over the place. I thought it was the greatest thing in the world and playing modem games and 
hollow dukes and pipe bombs and elevators. I mean, it, Jason can attest how oh, amazing that was and how oh, fun yeah. it was. Um, so, I mean, this was a game that obviously I've been waiting for for 15 years. I knew I wasn't going to get game of the year. I knew I wasn't going to get, you know, Call of Duty graphics and gameplay. I knew I was going to get something that was a little bit dated looking, a little bit rough around the edges. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to be Duke Nukem and it's going to be, you know, nostalgia hit me. So, uh, I popped it in the theme song hits, you know, I was pretty much grinning from ear to ear. I was like in love. I was like, Oh my God, it's going to be amazing. Um, so the game starts. The graphics, yes, they're rough. And I, I kind of expect it to be kind of rough. I mean, it's <laughs> it's funny if you watch the faces of them. They're like they, I feel like they don't even move. Oh, yeah, even, on, really, even really... on PC, yeah, they didn't line, line up at all. No, so, I mean, that, whatever. That shit doesn't really bother me much. Um, but once they, they put you in the football field, um, and you're shooting... I, I can't remember his name. I'm not a <laughs> the, big fan, I guess. Big motherfucker. Yeah, the big dude, whatever. <laughs> Uh, but you know, the, the, kind of like the rain effect. I mean, it looked pretty cool. I thought it looked pretty decent. And I remember seeing that when I was at PAX East. I was like, oh, it looks pretty sweet. You know, it's pretty fun. Um, then I won't do any spoilers, but uh, right after that, it's freaking hilarious. But uh, for the most part, I mean, it's it's fun. Like, I, I actually enjoyed it. And I, I can't really see why everybody trashed it as hard as they did. Like, I can see it getting maybe fives to sevens out of tens. Yeah. But, like, Destructoid gave it a two. And he was... I mean, I really like that website, but I thought he was really out of line with, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like this is a game that everybody loves to hate right now. Yeah, it sounds like it, eh? Yeah. And I don't understand why, because it's, I don't know, JC probably feel the same way I do, but it's, it's, it's fucking Duke Nukem. I mean, Absolutely. what are you, you, you going to expect? I think so. the best write-up I saw about it was a guy who said uh, they promised they would finally release the game. They never promised they'd make it the best thing you've ever seen. The whole point was that the legacy, the 12 year legacy of waiting for this game to come out mm -hmm. is being realized. They're not saying that they're going to make it look better than, you know, uh, Oblivion five. They're not saying that they're going to make it look better than any other game out there. They're saying they actually finally managed to get their shit together and release it. Well, I kind of commend Gearbox and stuff actually releasing it. I mean, if this game was to come out when it was supposed to come out, Everybody would have been riding its balls. I, I guarantee fucking teeing. Everybody would be riding its balls seeing as one of the greatest, you know, old school shooters ever, blah, yep. blah, 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 blah. Yep. And now that it's out now with you got, you know, Call of Duties and Battlefields and stuff that looks really, really good, really amazing. I mean, obviously it doesn't even stand a chance to the, the gameplay and the graphics, but uh, I don't know. I just had nostalgia all around. I, I just, I love old school shooters. My, my most favorite time of shooters was like Quake 1, uh, Doom. And, you know, Wolf 3D and uh, Duke 3D. So, I mean, yeah. those are my favorites. But uh, there's also elements, too. Like, they, they try to do some, like, Half-Life-ish kind of stuff with some puzzles. Oh, which, totally, totally. To slow the gameplay down, which, you know, whatever. And uh, the driving, I actually thought was really fun. Like, the monster truck parts. <laughs> One of the <laughs> best experiences I had in that game. Yeah, I, but I hands down, the, yeah. the desert part was probably yeah. my favorite part in the whole game. Um, but as the game progressed, I enjoyed it more and more and more. My... <laughs> huge gripe on this and i know uh jason can jump into the pc version but the loading times on consoles was atrocious really for for a game looking the way it does there's no reason a game has to load a minute every time you die it's absurd and yeah and there's parts where you die and you're gonna die over and over and over and i mean the game's not really hard but it's this parts that you're gonna die you know four or five times until you figure out exactly what you got to do and um and the reason why i mean there's no uh, health packs in this game like in old school Duke games you actually have like a regen system like Halo um, which I wasn't crazy about but you know whatever and uh, the whole two weapon system but uh, I won't go too far I'll, I'll let Jason jive in here yeah no I mean Tim that, that's exactly I mean you and I are on the same boat here the exact same boat and you know without you know basically being a broken record and repeating everything you said there uh, you know I'm obviously a big Duke fan too I also played all the originals gosh a little side scrolling I mean it's totally crazy when you think about it mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh, of course Duke 3D was you know the first game I ever played online um, on my uh, 166 megahertz uh, Packard Bell dial up uh, amazing <laughs> computer dial to computer uh, it was amazing <laughs> anyway uh, yeah so I was I was Look, we have a treat here. We have a treat. We have a game that was released. It went through so many years where we heard it was coming out, and then it wasn't. It went through a whole bunch of legal battles. It got tossed around, passed hands. You know, Gearbox picked it up, and, and I think they did a fantastic job with it. I've said this before. You hype anything up, 
for 12 years. You put a you put a time limit on something like that. Star Wars. It's, yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. it's never yeah. going to live up to the potential. I've said this probably two or three times, and that's the thing is, you know what? And and I'm also leading to believe that. What would you guys think? Maybe fifty percent of the people that play Duke forever today, fifty percent, maybe even sixty percent. I would go as far to say, haven't even played any Duke games prior, or Duke oh. 3D. Yeah, but I what about the whole that. immaturity thing? Like they're saying, like, oh, it's, it's so disgusting. I'm, I'm very offended, and I'm like, it's the same thing from Duke. I mean, it's Duke, and it's not anything different that you hear in South Park. Although they're like, oh, you know, South Park's very tasteful oh. with the jokes that they make. But oh, for yeah, God's yeah. sake, it's why fucking that? immature. Give me a break. Shit. You know, I love it. Sorry, it's, this is no <laughs> look. I mean, this this is no different than. And I actually posted this on my Facebook. We were talking about this because I was looking at the game. Hold on, I got it right here. Um, on the back of it, you know, obviously rated M for Mature, and this, um, to my knowledge, is the first game in the United States that I know of that has this many uh, accolades attached to it, per se, right? So, has blood and gore, intense violence, mature humor, nudity, strong language, strong sexual content, use of drugs and alcohol. I don't think there's been a game... <laughs> that has all of those in one game. Yeah, I and saw that. I, I, I researched that. this, and the closest one next to it is Grand Theft Auto, and it's, mm. it's missing two, and it also has a partial nudity. This is full nudity. Mm. So, I mean, Oops. you know what I'm saying? So, um, but just, I mean, that's just a little side note there. But yeah, getting back to what you're saying there, I mean, come on, people. This is no, this is no different than watching a rated R movie or, you know, watching some, you know, fucking crazy action movie or watching a South Park show. I mean, it's just, it's crude. It's Duke. It's Duke's the guy that makes fun of everything that's going on in the world. You know what I mean? Hey, Jay, Jason, Jason, I'm going to put you in a spot. Like, what is one of the new lines he says? Not one of the old ones. Like, what's what's something he says that would be offensive? Like The rape he, like, one. What does he say? It, it, there's, there's a part where an alien's fucking a chick, and he walks by and he goes, looks like you're fucked. And all these people are like really offended. Um, oh, the other one, oh yeah, that's yeah, fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah, Do you remember yeah. the fags one? There was like I don't know if it was a magazine or something. I didn't see it. Somebody I was listening to another podcast and they mentioned it that there was a guy smoking a cigarette and it said fags on it. Uh. <laughs> it's, just, it's so stupid, but oh yeah, well, yeah, well, hey, well hey, that's hey, what they like, call it in Europe, right? They call cigarettes that. That's what yeah, they call that, it. that was the whole joke. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. that's that's why they call them yeah. that. And, but uh, yeah, hey, do you know what? I, I noticed that earlier on, I'm sitting there going, "God damn, EB guys are a bunch of faggots, goddamn motherfucking faggots." And um, yeah, I don't mean any offense by that. They're a bundle just, of sticks. Yeah, he's talking about cigarettes. Bun bundle, of, bundle of cigarettes. Those faggots. <laughs> <laughs> go smoke yourself, you bitch. So it, it sounds like just go into it. If you want to get it, go into it. Just have an open mind. The graphics aren't gonna be the well, greatest. Well, hey, I think. Uh, well, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, I think fans of Duke, like me and Jason, are obviously going to be somewhat, uh, not biased, but we know what we're getting into. People who have never played Duke are going to trash it and hate it. You know what? I, I actually really want to buy it I because of my nostalgia for Duke 3D that I have on the Sega Saturn. Oh, yeah. yeah. Saturn. So I, got yeah. the, I got it for the Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn! <laughs> when, when, when that game came out, now, here's a fun little bit of trivia for you guys. Uh, the Sega Saturn version of it was done by a company called Lobotomy Software. Now, there, there were two reasons why I wanted it. One, because it was Duke, and it had, as opposed to the N64, left the strippers in, left all the crude humor in the whole mine, which, for me, that's the selling point. It's absolutely immature. That's why I love it. But the other thing it had... They had previously released a game called Power Slave. It was a first-person shooter based on Egyptian mythology. Buried deep in the code was a little game called Death Tank. And it was a eight-player simultaneous Scorched Earth. If anyone remembers Scorched Earth, you'll Scorched Earth on the oh, PC, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit okay. rules. Now make, yeah. now make that real-time. So instead of setting your angle and your powder charge... You have an arrow over your tank and the direction it faces is where you're shooting and the length of the arrow is how far your shot will go. And then everyone shoots real time at the same time. And the graphics look like Atari. That was Death Tank. Wow. And it was amazing. And for that one, they had like this little three-year-old crayon drawing of a skull and scrawled Death Tank for the start screen. And whenever you hit start, it would go, Death Tank! Yeah, Yay! I remember that. Now, 
Duke Nukem 3D on the Saturn had Death Tank Zvi. And the only way to unlock it was to have a save data from the other game Lobotomy did for 3D Realms, which was Quake. Yeah, because so I have both of those. If you mm-hmm. have a Quake save in your Saturn memory and you load up Duke, you'll have the option to play Death Tanks Vi, which added a heavy metal theme song, which is really freaking awesome. And uh, it added blitz and bonus rounds and a few extra weapons. I totally wow. forgot about that. Yeah, man, I had totally forgotten about that. The the other way to unlock it, if you were going to do it without the Quake save, was you had to go through the actual game of Duke 3D and break every toilet and urinal. <laughs> And that's how you unlock Death Tanks Vi if you don't have the save data. Mm. Hey, Jason, I got a question for you. You yeah. have both 360 and PC version, right? I sure do. All right. The PC experience when it comes to, like, the when I was watching your stream, like, the frame rate looked unreal it's, compared to the, the uh, console version. You know what? There's so much to say right now. First of all, um, the frame rate is silky smooth on PC. Can I, 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 I bought it. Okay. I had a conversation with my cousin. And and I and you guys know how I like my shooters. I like my shooters. I like mouse and keyboard. I'm I'm partial to that. And I always I always want that type of control. But I had I took a poll and everyone says I'm getting it on 360. I'm getting on 360. So I went out and I bought it on 360 first. I bought it and I came home and I I played it. And the the frame rate is there's something wrong with it. Mm-hmm. And I'm I will say it may not bother everyone. I'll be the first to say I am really. I'm really picky when it comes to that. And for my shooters, I'm really picky. But I can also give credit where credit's due. And I can also deal with things as just whatever, right? I can just deal with it. It's okay. But mm-hmm. the frame rate... Now, Tim, it feels like it's like push-pull. It's like like well, surging. That's what, what I got. It is, this, is, this is what I get out of it. And I can kind of compare it with another PC game that went to Xbox 360. It's a PC game that should be on PC. It, it, when they put it on console, it's just it's not working. And I don't know if you've played Quake Four on the 360, but I think Quake Four looks a hundred times worse than Duke Forever. <laughs> I haven't played that on console. No, it's it's if you go to Lame Stop sometime, you can probably find it for like five bucks used. Just just pick it up and play it. It okay. just it's tell me what you think because it, <laughs> some PC games just were not meant to yeah, go. Because I have on the I have it on PC, so I'll be able to to definitely compare. Well. I had on PC initially, and like I don't know, I, I could never keep up with video cards, and you know, it just ran like shit. So I was like, well, whatever, you know, I got my three sixty five bucks used at at LameStop. I'll, I'll totally buy yeah, it. Yeah, how back can it be, right? You know, and I mean, I finished it, but it was it was painful. But you know, I finished it. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, and that's that's just really the thing is, uh, I just the game is. It looks like the game could have been on a PS two. Uh, you know, I think it does, and I, I don't mm-hmm. think that. Um, they just optimized the code. I don't think they optimized the game to run on the consoles. Um, I don't. I just don't think they they took the time. <laughs> Twelve years, right? I just don't think they took the time to really to port it correctly. Is all I'm saying. Now I cannot confirm that it's the same on PS3. I don't own it on PS3, and I don't know anyone that does uh, immediately. But I'm sure people can uh, tell us in the forums, or whatever. But the thing is, is really when it comes down to it. People are gonna say, "Oh, it's the same. Oh, it doesn't happen. Oh, it's this because no one has a standards and in, in the eye that I do. So, like, I I just need to physically see it in order to, mm-hmm. to be able to tell. But um, the frame rate bugged me so much. I played maybe an hour of it, and my eyes started to bleed and my head started to spin. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the Raiders lost arc. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it actually it did. It bothered me so much. I I went right back out and I just bought it on PC. That's cool, well, and it's it's a great great experience on PC. I, I encourage everyone um, to definitely get it. Uh, you know, get it all all over 360. Get it for PS3 if you can get it for PC. If you guys definitely, I, I, this is the first time I have. I know it's so funny. This this is the first time I've really felt that the quote unquote pro reviewers, whatever have you, uh, were really just way off, and and I and I don't. There's so many factors going into this. There's nostalgia factor, but also, I mean, really, we have to compare it to what we're comparing it to, people. Everyone's comparing it to Call of Duty and Battlefield and Halos, and you guys, it's just Duke. You can't, you can't be comparing it. I mean, give me a break. So, who gave it a two? 
out of line. Uh, destructoid. And it, it, it was, he was mean spirited though. Like he wasn't fair. Like actually, you know, everyone kind of hates on IGN, but like their review was harsh, but it wasn't like, it was kind of like factual harsh. Um, another really excellent review. If people want to check it out, screw attack did a review of it. And I thought it was probably the most fair review. Like they weren't saying it was amazing, but they weren't saying it was bad either. And they, they, it's kind of felt the same way we did. I mean, it's it's Duke. You know what you're going to get. But uh, one thing I want to ask you, Jason, what what do you think of it? Possibly, like if it came out as a budget title, let's say it came at forty bucks, do you think people would bash it as much as they did? Because I think it, it would have been a, an excellent budget title. I think you're right. Yeah, I don't think it would have gotten the the hate that it has if it was on a budget price range. It's it's crazy. It takes like what fifteen hours to beat. Mm. Well, yeah, I was reading ten to fifteen hours, roughly, depending wow. on what you, on how much you want to complete. Um, I, I've I've beaten it twice now, and I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to spoil anything because it's so new. Um, but right now, I'm doing speed runs on it, and I'm yeah. I, I can beat it in about three and a half four hours right now. Jason, we're talking about the game. You're beating the game, right? Oh boy, look at you! Look at you! My penis is sore. Fifteen hours is a long time like, to beat it. Beat it for three hours. I'm like, it for four hours. <laughs> hours. I'm doing a speed run. <laughs> yeah, I was reading something and someone said like it takes tw- uh, it's like seventeen hours or something to beat. And I'm like, what are you freaking on slow mo? <laughs> what are you stopping looking at every plant? What the fuck? <laughs> Yeah. Well, that, that's one thing we we should point out too with Duke Nukem is like they did put a lot of work and a lot of detail into the game because there's a lot of shit to like look at and observe. There's a lot of like inside jokes. Oh yeah, uh, they poke fun at Halo. They poke fun at um, what the hell's his name, the guy from Terminator Salvation, uh, Christian Bale. Oh my God, there's references oh, like yeah. you wouldn't believe Christian Bale. What did they, what, his freak out or something? Yeah, his freak out. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> Unfreaking believable. What is your problem? I'm just fixing the lights. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. I guess there's an achievement where you can punch him out. I didn't get that though. Uh, you mean you didn't get it? Everyone gets that. Well, I didn't. I didn't know. I was breezing through it. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, just, okay. okay. I'm speed running it. You're like, I'm, go back. I'm, like, I'm gonna run by this piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, Jason. Was- go ahead. Jim. Uh, and the blimp at the beginning too. I guess it's an achievement too. If you shoot that, I didn't do that either. Yeah, there's a lot of references to the first one. You know, or, or I mean, Duke 3D. That is, you know, um, mm. with the blimp and all that sort of thing. But I mean, they, they make references like you said. You know, poking fun at Halo with the power armor. You no know, power armors for pussies. You know, and all that sort of thing. Um, they make references to uh, Battlefield, which of course no one else in the world caught except me. Uh, it's, it's the part where you beat the uh, the three titted bitch, whatever the big bitch is her name. And remember, Duke's on the ground. He's all like dying, and this dude runs over and he's like, "Oh, Duke, are you all right?" He's like, "Oh shit, all I am is an engineer. Where's the medic? Medic?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, that's Battlefield right there. I know it." Medic, <laughs> medic. But uh, yeah, there's all sorts of really funny references. And but if you don't search and explore and you know try to find things and interact with things, um, you won't find them. You know, you can just speed run and not really see any of it mm-hmm. what do you feel about the two weapon thing um yeah you know i, I don't really care for that uh, but you know here's the thing i know everyone's bashing it and you know what i mean duke 3d you could carry fucking eight weapons you know i know i know but look at it like this instead of it being a negative thing why don't you try to use it for strategy or try to look at it as a different way to play the game that, that's how I'm looking at it. I can't change it. I can't fix it. I would like to hold more weapons. I honestly, my favorite weapon in the game. Well, Tim, what's your favorite weapon of the game? Other than the RPG or the rockets that you have to use to beat the um, bosses. I always find myself keeping a shotgun as one of my weapons, always. Because it's like, I hate those running pig guys. Those guys freaking take you out in like two hits, but uh, it's, they're, it's like a one shot kill, pretty much. So that. I know that's kind of like the generic answer. I, the freeze gun I thought was pointless. I didn't like that. Um, and as I like played through the game more and more, I find myself using pipe bombs a lot, like mm-hmm. nonstop. But uh, I don't know, like the two weapon thing kind of bothered me a little bit. But uh, once you get to bosses and stuff, there's always ammo crates away. Or, yeah, you know, they're just stocked. Yeah, exactly. And they like want you to just keep freaking pumping shit at the at the bosses, which is sweet. Yeah, and you just have unlimited amounts of ammo, so it's like really doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, my favorite gun in the game is the pistol. I love the pistol. I always, mm. I, I mean, I'll go through the whole game with a pistol and a shotgun. That's it. It's like Halo 1 style. Like the pistol in Halo 1 was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, you just fucking aim at their head. Boom. Done. You know? 
Just love yeah. it. So yeah, I, was, I was watching your live stream, Jason, the other day, and it was it was cool. Like you just blow them up and shit. Yeah, you, I, I like when you punch them too. It's pretty. Cool. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Different. You know, you can pick up things. You can pick up. Uh, <laughs> you know, crates and barrels and, you know, like at the beginning of the game, you can pick up like weights in the little weight room down there and throw them at people. And, um, you know, it stays true to its roots. Um, you know, the original Duke 3d also had, you, know, you, you kind of had to go through puzzles, you know, to, to advance the next level, but it definitely has a lot of half-life, um, elements to it now, uh, mm -hmm. with that, uh, you know what? And there's no like indicators. There's no indications other than like, you know, glowing like doors where you need to go and this and that. So, I can see a lot of, you know, uh, people that are new to the franchise getting confused, confused. and discouraged <laughs> and, and, and big time feedback. Rob man, echo, echo. Feedback, feedback. Am I, am feedback. I feedbacking and echoing here? Oh, you're, you're sound like a robotic man. Not Rob man, but <laughs> robotic man. Mr. Roboto. Is it better now? Is that yeah. better? Yeah, that's yeah, better. Yeah. That's better. Oh, that's sorry, my mic unplugged itself there. Sorry about that. So you know, oh. anyway, to wrap to wrap it up, uh, I, I thought the reviews, the pro reviews, were, were kind of off. Um, I've played piss poor dog shit shooters, and uh, I know how to give credit where credit is due with them. Uh, definitely, I think PC is the superior port. Um, what else? Uh, I thought it was a great game. I knew what I was getting into, and take it for what it's worth. It's a great experience. Any Duke fan will love it. If you're not a Duke fan, wait for it to come down in price, pick it up used, um, and have a coconut smile. I think it'll smile. be coming down used in price. You know, that's that's a funny thing about most video games these days. If they're not super blockbuster titles, just wait. Like oh, three what, months, what is this is gonna be time? twenty bucks. Yeah. Guarantee it. Yeah. Three months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's exactly. what we always say. Like, oh, uh, Duke Nukem. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll get it when it gets to twenty bucks. That's what we always say. Mm -hmm. What's well, like what Rob Man was talking about earlier in the episode uh, was just used games and it's killing. The industry now, or it's called the company supposedly, you know. So, oh, well. way it goes. <laughs> is, how's the sales? I, I don't own a video single... game company, so I'm not crying about it. How how are the sales figures for the game so far? Is it selling pretty well, or do you guys have any idea? Um, idea. We can look it up. I, I have no idea. I, yeah, I, I don't know, but I, I know I was reading something saying like they even though like uh, the negative reviews and stuff like that, and I heard Gearbox like fired their PR department because they were threatening these reviewers for the negative reviews, and like they. Oh yeah, that was that one guy from from the the PR company, and he tweeted, um, "After seeing all of the venom from the reviewers, we'll be looking very carefully at who does and does not get review copies of games in the oh, future." He said venom like twenty times. Yeah. <laughs> in his sentences, but, but they fired but it was him. Just, huh? But, and, but he was basically threatening that, you know, companies that gave them negative re reviews would not get review copies of games in the future. And then the actual PR company went, you said, what? No, no, no. He doesn't speak for us. He's fired. Yeah. So, oops. Even though it's negative, I mean, that's what they do. They review them and they give a score, you know. Yeah. He can't be threatening like that. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just take it for what it is. Yeah, I mean, exactly. So you have it for a 360. You don't have it for PC, Tim. No, see, I'm on a Mac. See, I used to PC game a lot back in the day, and unfortunately, I've, I've, I've drinking the Kool Aid, and I'm more console now. Well, you welcome, have, you, brother. You, you have a, you have, <laughs> an, you have an Intel Mac, right? Yes. I see. Actually, uh, you inspired me, Mister Heine. I actually got Steam on my Mac because I didn't. Steam's actually really good now. Like I oh, remember when I first started God. using Steam, it was really crappy, and the friends thing never worked ever. Yeah, um, man. Yeah, absolutely. I installed uh, Half Life Two and Counter Strike. I haven't touched them yet, but wow, Counter Strike is awesome. Well, the not, I can't play one point six, but Source, which I never really got into Source. Well, I was just gonna say, you know, um, I run XP on my Mac all the time just to have another Windows machine for LAN parties and stuff. So, like, you can run Boot Camp, run XP or Windows Seven mm -hmm. on there. And See, I, I I have all my PC games still. Like, I never dude, get rid of those. There's no reason why you shouldn't be doing Boot Camp right now and playing. I'm sorry, don't hurt me. No, I, I'm gonna come over. Yeah, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna come over man. and we're get gonna on. set that up. Yeah, what the hell? The belt hurts so yeah. bad, Mister Heidi. That's the way I like it. <laughs> yeah, over my knee, see? No, I, was, I was just suggesting <laughs> I bend you over my motherfucking knee, see? Sorry, sorry. Be sleeping with the fishes. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, this, is, this is good for us uh, because we came into this podcast. And we're like, man, do we even have a topic? Like, nah, let's just let's just talk about uh, Ocarina of Time and uh, Duke Nukem. And I thought our personalities would do the rest, which they you know. It's funny. Have. We talked about these two things on my podcast last night, so I was fresh. I was I was already I had like some practice. 
Why don't you plug your podcast real quick, Tim? I actually enjoy it. Operation Kill Sure. Screen. Yeah. Operation Kill Screen.com. We're on iTunes. And very much like all gen gamers, my my next favorite podcast besides mine. Obviously, I have to put mine first. But, uh, yeah. Hadouken. It's, it's, Hadouken. it's Hadouken. Hadouken. the same. Hadouken. The same deal. We just like, you know, shoot the shit, have fun, crack jokes, be immature. It's if you like all gen gamers, you'll love Operation Kill Screen. You'll Holy love shit. it to death. I'm, I'm offended. Holy Are you calling shit. me immature? I'm very immature. <laughs> I'll admit it. I don't care. Hey, when are you going to have Rob Man on there? Robert. I still got to have Pete Door. I think, and actually, I got to have EMU Review, Mr. Heine, on there, too. I got I to gotta have all the all gen gamers. I, I'm I love a true how fan. I just got swept absolutely to the back door oh. on that. Holy, absolutely eh? back ended Holy, it. Holy, get to the back. When are you going to have Rob Man on there? Oh, well, I got to get Pete freaking Door. Holy EMU shit. Review on there. I mean, let's get some <laughs> thousand subscribers. I, I'm, I have something to admit. I'm a star fucker. Blow it out your ass. That's, oh. that's Duke speaking for me, Pat. <laughs> Rob's gonna beat me up in Seattle. It's gonna happen. Or you, there's gonna be a raping out there. Oh, that's right, Tim. You're coming. You're coming to PAX. Yeah. The last thing I gotta do is I gotta buy my plane tickets. They're really expensive right now. I just got mine uh, last week. I'm kind of scared. They're like almost like f- almost 500 bucks a pop for me. Wow. wow. Shit, eh? Yeah. I'm kind of forced into a lot of traveling for work. I got a free. I got one one way in free anyway. So that's, that's, that's cool. It'll be, it'll be a good time. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be fun. You, you coming to the game deals party? When is it? I'm getting more data. Hey, you're invited. It's, it's Saturday, all good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm invited. I think it's gonna be too. It's gonna be too crowded. It's gonna be fucking nutty. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> I'll, I'll come to the door and be like, mm, "You're not on the guest list." Please. Yeah, yeah, wristbands. We're handing out wristbands like we did last year, right, John? Well, actually, you know what? Well, the sad thing is, Rob is gonna be holding the guest list. He's like, "Jumble Junkie, nope." Mm, he didn't want me on the Operation Kill Screen, podcast. but the rest of your podcasters <laughs> let him on. <laughs> yeah, we totally no. got to get Jumble Junkie into that party, but you know, first we got to get Pete Door and uh, Jason Heine in the door, <laughs> and uh, maybe get Splatter Trigger in there, and uh, you know, maybe, maybe there'll be time uh, later. Sorry, I love you, Rub Man. Oh, At least three times a night, but don't. You tell know what me. my f- favorite moments of the Happy Console Gamer Show is no, this is no joke. I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. The part where. Johnny's listening to his answering machine and you're like almost crying about Mega Man. Oh, dude. That was, was the most intense moment in my life. It was the most hysterical thing ever, but it was like cool at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Robot Man's back. Mr. Roboto. He's gonna be a blue collar man. That's, that's the nigh incontrollable rage of Cyber Johnny. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> I, I get so angry, right? I break, t- I break t- time and space and binary code. He's a Cylon. Okay, so I really want to say because I remember I came home and I and I heard that message on my answer machine. And, and for everybody out there, you know, uh, Rob was very happy, very upset on the answer machine message. And it's in the episode, uh, the Mega Man press kit. That we have up you can it's right in the first minute so you can just check that out but it was interesting i came home and i sat down and i listened to it and i was just like wow it was it was like so intense it was so over the top but he has so much same, passion for it which so is passion which is great. and i was like this is great and this is kind of like a, a historic moment you know this really is a kind of a moment and i phoned up rob and i said hey congratulations for getting it all and i'm, I'm super happy for you but i'm like do you mind if i put that in the episode he's like yeah go ahead he had no yeah. problems at all and no. i always gave i always gave props to rob for that because he, you had no issues about it You're like yeah put it in no, and, because yeah. the, the, now a bit of background on that um during the time that those press kits were announced there was a lot of things going on on my own end of life. I was doing night shifts that were 13 hour night shifts every night in, in trades work, very physical work. I wasn't seeing my wife at all because I was getting up after she'd gone to work and coming home after she was asleep. And basically I was on the cap community website in the forums, talking with people, they had announced these press kits and the rules kept changing about how you had to get them. First, you had to comment in the thread where they announced they were going to make them. And then they realized that, well, that wasn't going to work. So you had to be a contributing member of the community. And then you had to this and you had to that. And it was a very tense thing because there were only 200 of them that were supposed to go out. They ended up making more than that. But of 200, 
I wanted one so badly. Such was my passion for these games, but there was all the stress uh, going a little bit squirrely over basically being nocturnal when people really aren't supposed to be. Uh, and it became such a big focal point of something that was this shining light through all of the other stuff I was going through. And then the day that they emailed me with the code to purchase one and you had to buy them. They weren't free, but you could buy one for 50 bucks off the store. They sent me my code and said, you've really shown your passion for this series and for our company. Here you go. This is for you. And it was such a rush of emotion that hit me that that message was the result of all of it just purging out. And that's why, like, I, I have no qualms with people hearing that and people can laugh at me if they want. The bottom line is I'm that passionate about gaming and that's where my heart and my soul was at that moment was, was so excited to have something so special for myself and so personal The the whatever dollar value people put on it now doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that that is a Mega Man collectible that is so near and dear to my heart mm -hmm. and that I was chosen, handpicked by Capcom to be one of the recipients of it. I'll hail the chosen one. He said only 200 were made, huh? That was the original number they had. Uh, they were going to make was two hundred, but what what they did eventually was uh, they they had them up. Uh, that the, the fans and the members of the community were given their access to them, and then however many were left, they were just going to blow out the doors on a fire sale on the store on the store. And they said at this exact time on this date, we will put up uh, orders for them on the store. And within ten minutes, they had oversold by vast quantities they couldn't wow. shut it down off the store fast enough and they took it upon themselves to honor the extra orders as many as they could hmm. so there's more than 200 nobody knows an exact count they've never released one but uh, i i don't think it's over 500 it's it's less than that so i think it's probably about 250 to 300 of them what, out there. what's the the value you think i know and I, I know to yours is, is you know sentimental I, value would, but to like how much would it go for in the market do you I couldn't even begin to guess for a while there. They were going for like three and four hundred dollars on eBay while the wow. fever was still high. At this point, I'm not sure. Uh, it, it, it would be interesting to find out, though. But uh, I, th I think the last I saw it was going for like one hundred and fifty bucks. Seems to be the average now. One fifty to two hundred sounds about reasonable. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Once the fever died down, that would be about right. I think so now. You it's know. still pretty pretty rare though <laughs> yeah because i oh, yeah. think they're i think they're still showing up and i think give it another few years when they they stop showing up that's when it'll go up it's yeah. kind of yeah it's a, it's a, as it goes up as you know they they, they want to go up because people want the mangoes up as initially and it goes down and then they go up again later on you know give it yeah. a moment yeah and you're, and you're talking about you're talking about then then what about the game though john about it going up and I'm down i'm talking about my penis actually oh, oh, okay. it'll, go, it'll go up and you're talking about his penis it go down a little bit, then I think about your mom, and then it goes back up again. That's how. That's how. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's how oh, that's, a that's a goddamn knee snapper. God damn it. That's some serious mother loving. <laughs> <laughs> What's your mom like? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's a mighty fine cardigan, Mrs. Gamester eighty one's mom. <laughs> Mind if I loosen that button? You look a bit warm. My mom's <laughs> dead. <laughs> well, that's why she didn't put much of a put up much of a fight there. You oh, see? God. Oh man! Oh, Robert! Oh, man. that's too far. You have ruined the fight. <laughs> Everything was funny, and then you went too far with having sex with the corpse. That's You've gone game. too far. <laughs> hey, after a long day of work, it's always nice to crack into a cold stiff one, right? Oh, oh. Yeah. it's wrong in so many ways. We get a cold stiff ones. Well, um, is Pete coming on? <laughs> <laughs> Joke of the night. Oh. Cold stiff one. <laughs> no, he's not, Johnny. He's not coming on. Oh, he's just he's just having sex with some hobbits tonight, isn't he? He's dildo throbbins right now. Dildo throbbins. <laughs> yeah, They're taking the, the Peter to Isengard. They're taking the Peter to Isengard. Hey, do they oh. have Lord of the Cock Rings on um, Netflix? What are the G-strings? I'll look for you right now. <laughs> I kind of want to watch it again, actually. I out. certainly don't. I was so disappointed. <laughs> I was I was expecting something with a budget. And all I saw was a bunch of pretty oh, well naked terrible. people in the forest. It was horrible. Come into the forest. G-strings. <laughs> uh, no. Not seeing it. I heard Netflix is terrible in Canada. Is that true? 
Yes, it's true. Thank you. Like I saw, I saw Ed's review on it. It was interesting. It's fucking retarded. I don't even bother. You know, I use Netflix to find things to download. I'm like, oh yeah, cool documentary on that. Okay, download. I love you know, Netflix. Actually, have you guys seen this? Is the first time I've ever seen it, but the Street Fighter animated movie. Yeah, it's well, awesome. You're talking about it. on your podcast, dude, about the the nips. Chun Li's boobs. I was like, kind of like half asleep, <laughs> and all of a sudden her boobs came up. I was like, what? Oh, is that when she's in the shower? <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. whoa. Oh yeah, that was. A I've got scene. that on laser disc. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like Guile dropping f bombs and stuff. And it was, it was really cool. what's it rated? I don't know, but it had like um, they had songs from like Silver Chair in there. Alice and uh, I've only ever seen I've only really? ever seen the Japanese yeah. version. I've seen yeah, the, same here. It's on yeah. Netflix stream. Yes, yeah, on Netflix. I watched it the other night. Awesome. Oh god, I can't. Wait, what do you mean? What do you? What does Guile say? What did you say? Fuck you, Ken. There's something like oh, something. F- I heard the f bomb. There's a couple f bombs in, in it. It's pretty. It's pretty risque, I guess, for an animated movie. Fuck you, Ken, and your Hadouken. It's not like that Alpha movie. That that thing was atrocious. Oh, like, that was like, took me like three settings to finish it. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. It only took me twelve beers. Twelve beers. <laughs> Yeah. So. Oh yeah. No, well, I, I've been thinking about starting up doing movie reviews where I review how many beers it takes to get through this turkey of a film. God. Nice. So stuff like you know, Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus and Megalodon Shark Attack Three. <laughs> See, I love really bad movies. Like, Piranha Three. Me too. They I'm a huge fan of trauma. Like I love trauma movies, oh, and they're, they're yes, like the, the worst. Main, the final temptation of Toxie. Yes, I love any of the Toxic Avengers, Terror Firmer, Poultry Geist. Weren't, weren't the Toxic Toxic Avengers, Avengers weren't those like pornos too initially? Or Toxic Avengers? Avenger? No, the tro- Troma was known for, for two things. Some of the worst effects ever on the cheapest budget and as much boobs and mostly naked women yeah. as they throw onto a camera. It's about independence and making just, you know, just I going the, with a whim, being independent. I remember no, the cartoon about, in the, the 90s, the cartoon, Toxic Avengers, you know, Crusader. Yeah. Or God, I've read both Lloyd Kaufman's books. One, you know, how to make your own damn movie, and then like you know how he made the Toxic Avenger and how he got started and stuff. And he just had a partnership, and he uh, he actually worked on the set of Rocky. He was like, uh, I think he was like a PR guy or something. Hmm. And uh, yeah, he started making like these kind of like silly, like crude comedies. Um, and then Toxic Avenger, he made that, and then you know pretty much the rest is history. So I don't know. Lloyd Kaufman's like a god. He's awesome. That's funny. He is proof of what you can do with very little money and a whole lot of imagination. Yep. He's like you my know, inspiration for my cantaloupe head explosion stuff. I, the best scene ever in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wasn't that the Alter Beast review? Yeah. See, that was like one of the only videos I ever did where like I incorporated friends and stuff. And that's, that's one thing I I'm know, really the jealous. only way you had actually had any friends. Well, that I, that's why I'm so jealous of you and Rob, man, because you have someone that's very passionate and wants to do videos with you. Like, I don't have anybody. I just... No, but you know, it's very, it's very tough for us to get together. It's, isn't it, Rob? Like, you can... You can but still, but you guys have great yeah. chemistry. The videos are... They come through and people like them. And- well, the funny thing about that is, as we've said so many times, is just, this is just us. I mean, we we back in the day... We used to like tape action figures to popsicle sticks and make movies that way. Yeah. I mean, we've just always wanted to fuck around with a video camera and be idiots. And the fact that other people have actually enjoyed us fucking around with a video camera and being idiots is, is awesome. Speak for yourself, Robert, man. (laughs) (laughs) What kind of videos are we talking about here? (laughs) Puppet shows. Calm down. It's not that kind of a movie game. I'm sorry to burst your bubble. (laughs) I, You're not going to see any Johnny TNA. I, I got. I got to. I got to say here, um, Mr. Gamester, you were hanging out with Billy and Mr. Kevin. Yeah. Ape. I'm looking at the picture right now. My pants are down. It's like, <laughs> this is awesome that you got to hang out with those guys. Yeah. So, so for those who are not familiar, uh, Captain Eight Bit. I know we had him on the podcast. I think a couple episodes ago, right? Yeah. Um, yeah it was a fun podcast. That's when we were really good guys. About, uh, Jay, uh, Billy and Jay, and they have a show called. Um, it's called uh, gaming uh, game game chasers. The game chasers, and it's kind of like American Pickers, but they don't really necessarily resell the games uh, like the American Pickers would. But so they they live in Texas. I'm here this week for work in Austin, and uh, they came down from Dallas, and, and we met up last night and went went hit up some some games. It was really funny because we went to uh, went to a place called Game Over, which is in, they had a couple locations here. I think they they went to one initially, but a really cool store. And then we went to uh, a guy who was on Craigslist. And we went to this guy's random apartment. We went in here 
and he had a whole bunch of retro machines. And I guess he like he buys and sells trades out of his house. He had a really impressive collection. He's like, "Which one's Game Street One? I like your show." I'm like, "It's me." He's like, "I watch your show." He's like, "Wow, that's cool." <laughs> you know, it's kind of it's always if he wild. Watches your show? Shouldn't he have recognized you right away? That's, that's the thing. I don't know. I don't know how much. You, yeah, you think so, right? I watch it right from the apartment, right here, totally nude, running around my consoles. <laughs> You know, somebody messaged me, Gamester, when we were at PAX, when you went up to see Johnny's t-shirt on that kid. Mm -hmm. He messaged me about my podcast or something, and he said that he knew who you and Splatter Trigger were. And I go, "Mm -hmm." (laughs) we we went went up to him, and he's like, like, uh, he didn't say anything. No, I know. Maybe he was kind of shy, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're we're kind of like, we're very social kinds of guys, you know, but there's a lot of people who are not like that, and they're kind of like, oh, hey. They don't want to. They don't want to conference. You know, Pete was a busy check. one. Pete was busy saying autographs all the time to you know the kids. And stuff. I know I didn't get to talk to him much. We played a little bit of Warlords, and that was about the extent of my interaction with Mister. Yeah, I love Dorr. that cat. I love that cam. That was sweet. So, what's your next cabinet you're going to be hunting down? Um, well, I just bought a pinball machine. What a couple right. weeks ago? That's right. I got a 1979 couple. Stern Meteor. Which is, nice. You know, it's, a, it's an older solid state, but just you know something for me to play with. So I've been. Nice. Messing around with LEDs, like you know, cleaned it out, and it's it's fun, it's good stuff. But I don't know, it's it's getting to the point now where I've got nine arcade machines and a pinball Shit. machine. I don't have much more room. <laughs> so, yeah, you, do. you get a pretty big basement there. I know, but I've been whoosh, whoosh, told that I can't expand what? anymore. What the I... hell? Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's when you got to be like, hey, any woman ever tried to tell me what you? <laughs> I said, bring me some pie, bitch. You know, I mean, <laughs> gotta lay down but, the law, hit her on the nose of the newspaper and some shit. It is, it is cracked though. I mean, so addicting. It is an addicting arcade. hobby, yeah. dude. It's it's mm-hmm. sad. Like I'm on Craigslist every day, even though like I'll I'll, I'll tell kind of a, like a fun little thing about arcade stuff. Like I'll, most people, are like oh yeah, you must be rich, blah blah blah. Honestly, arcade machines are really fucking cheap. Like yeah. I yeah. guaranteed some of you guys, Mister Pete Door or even Mister Johnny Millennium, spend a hell of a lot more. On console and rare stuff than I do on arcade stuff. <laughs> it's the moving um, that from point A to point B. That's a bitch, you know. Well, like getting getting downstairs, upstairs, you know. See, I have, a, I have a daylight well. basement, so that's not an issue. But um, one one word of advice about arcade collecting: know people. If if you know other collectors and you know, if there's a community that you know of, anything you're looking for within pretty much you know a snap of your fingers. You can get anything you want. So, um, unfortunately, I'm very good friends with Black Dog Seven, as you guys have had on the podcast. Yeah, he's a cool guy. John's a cool guy. Yeah, and he has this fantastic community um, up where I live, and we just, you know, we're really tight. And actually, I'm going up there uh, well, this weekend. So, can I ask you something then, uh, Tim? There, mm-hmm. I, I have a Mega Man the Power Battle cabinet that I've converted off of a Street Fighter I got from uh, a guy I worked with, and I actually rebuilt yep. this thing myself. Yeah, I remember from the episode. Yeah, I cannot, for the love of God and all that's holy, find the marquee for it. Um. Well, sometimes I mean, if you, it depends how anal you are. Like, you could probably find a reproduction. Um, I, I've looked, uh, googled as much as I can Google. But if you, if you, if you could, what is it called? Mega Mega Man. Mega Man: The Power Battle. I'll look for you. I'll find uh, it. If you could do that, I would be eternally grateful to you, sir. Uh, yeah, those marquees are cool. The the other thing I want to try and do at some point is I want to set myself up with a uh, a two joystick three button like per cabinet for mm-hmm. the power battle so I can do a redo sand it paint it redo the T molding and the whole nine to do a a pseudo dedicated for that mm-hmm. and then turn my other one back into a Street Fighter someday. Well, Street most of Street Fighter ones were kits anyways though. Like what yeah. kind of cab is it? It's it's a it's an old eighties conversion cab. It's one of the straight sided. Um, very basic, cheapest dirt conversion cab that you could have yeah. thrown almost anything into. Yeah, so that's so yeah, the problem. So when I first started collecting, like you'll find like people who are into you know starting collecting arcade machines. Like a lot of mine started out as conversions. Like I have some pretty atrocious ones. Uh, I have a, a Time Killers cab, which I, I just got it because I had this pure nostalgia thing for Time Killers. But it's in a Crystal Castles cab. Oh mm. Jesus! And Crystal Castles uh. is like a gorgeous cab. I mean, it's not the greatest yeah. game in the world, but the cab is gorgeous. Uh, but yeah, it's all spray painted black and just, you know, it's not, it's not made for fighters, but, uh, uh, the Soul other one too, Calibur, I have, yeah. uh, what's the other one I have, uh, Soul Calibur, Isn't Soul like Calibur, that, yeah, that was an MK2, but, but that's, that's pretty common with, with, with Soul Calibur too. Like, um, any, yeah, those midway calves, you know, yeah, mid, midway calves are hoard around a lot. And then I have, uh, wrestle war with actually was Qbert. <laughs> hmm. 
So that was kind of torn up. But um, yeah, like Street Fighters, most of those were kits and stuff. My Street Fighter is actually in a Rampage cab. Oh, geez. Um, but it's funny. Like, I, I just purchased WWF WrestleFest. And if you look in the manual on the back, it gives you a list of cabs that are like good for that conversion because they're just kits. It's <laughs> cool. Johnny's a robot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Bar bar. Somebody, 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 bar, bar, somebody, bar. Else, somebody, somebody else has got a nice collection. Is Kane Turner. Oh, yeah. Kane oh. and I have become very good friends. We've He's a we've, very cool guy, yeah. If it wasn't for Kane, my Donkey Kong restoration would not have been done. Mm. That guy is a freaking... And I know Mr. Heine, listening to the, the Algen Gamers podcast, I said a puberty squeak. Ah! Like, he hooked you up with Mario All-Stars. Well, he hooked me up with a killer deal on a Donkey Kong PCB. Yeah, this so. guy's insane. He's like the nicest guy I've come across. Oh, he's fucking awesome. You know what I mean? And we're always, you know, sharing pictures and stuff and uh, talking things about arcades. And yeah, he's, he's definitely become definitely one of my gooder friends on the YouTube. Oh, he's got such a awesome. nice Strider cabinet. I can't like that Strider oh. cabinet he has is the very first one I ever saw. It looks exactly like that. But that beautiful. With Kane, the one thing that he's doing is he knows people. And that's why he's able to get these cabs. I mean, he's not really paying a whole lot for him, but he also has, I mean, he has, he has some experience like me. Um, you know, I'm still scared of monitors, <laughs> even though I, I yeah. tap my Donkey Kong monitor, but, uh, it's, it's scary. You know, it's, it's pretty intimidating when you open up one of those things until you kill you it can kill you. It, if you do wrong. it can kill you. But, uh, I mean, I've never heard of anyone getting killed, but you know, if you don't know what you're doing, you, you could get hurt. And yeah. you know, it's, there is a reason to be nervous about it, but it, you know, if you're safe and I mean, Rob knows from working on him when he was younger. Um, oh, yeah. it's, it's, not, don't, it's not that hard don't, but it's not that hard but the, definitely especially with the monitors because those old CRTs will hold a charge in the mm-hmm. tube mm-hmm. so man don't be like spitting on your fingers and poking shit in there seriously <laughs> you know, nah. make sure your stuff's grounded make sure you've discharged your monitor otherwise you know when you hear <laughs> ah, then somebody just fucked up <laughs> uh, and that person's dead so. you just fucked up man you really uh, did. I'm looking at Kane. Yeah, I'm looking at Kane's cabinets again. The final fight cabinet he has. Oh my god! He actually converted that. That was, I think, it was in a, a Nintendo cab when he bought it initially, and Gorgeous. he converted it to another cab. Um, Shinobi. Oh man, this, this guy's. That was another one. He did a conversion. Yeah. He did. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got some good stuff. He's he, yeah. he's definitely got an awesome arcade. I'm jealous. He's got an Outrun two in there too, which is oh, awesome. He just recently uh, got that one. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And then I saw he posted a picture today. When I'm really jealous. This is one of the cabs I want. Is uh, a versus Mario Brothers cab. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I love Nintendo cabs. I like my I know, I know, Tim. You were talking about this on your podcast, but the Retro mm-hmm. USB has that that game versus Mario Brothers on on Nintendo. Like it's a yeah, a it's fifty bucks. You, uh, I, I'm always like, I know you buy from them a lot, but I can't justify yeah. paying fifty dollars. That's expensive. For it. For an cart. I yeah. just can't do it. You know, and it, it, the reason why I brought it up in, in my podcast is, um, you know, Holly, Holly wants to play Donkey Kong. Like I've kind of inspired her to play Donkey Kong and obviously you can only play like the NES port and the NES port doesn't have the pie factory, but RetroUSB.com has the NES cart where it has mm-hmm. the, the pie factory level. So I was like mm-hmm. telling her about it and she'll probably get it for Christmas or, you know, maybe I'll surprise her. Who knows? No. But the Game Boy, she's, she's playing the Game Boy one, which does, right? Have the, the Pi Factory? Yeah, and I, I've actually never yeah. played that. I really want to, though. Yeah. <laughs> now, I had a bit of a question here, and this is something that I've kind of thought about over the years as, as, as my collecting has gone on. Mm-hmm. How many of us, now that we are you know, getting further on in our lives, getting into more settled career-style jobs and making better money, how many of us are going to start collecting arcade games as the next step in our collections? Because that's really... All those years of buying the old consoles, the 8 and 16 bit, was because that was as close as we could get to having the arcades at home. And now, some of us, a lot of us can afford to have those arcades at home. We we all have arcade machines right now. Every single one of us have an arcade machine. Yeah, we do. (laughs) And Jason and his Killer Instinct too. he's got, yeah. Jason's got some really nice ones. He's got some really nice ones. There's some storage. John's got some really nice ones I'm jealous of. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just out of room. I'm just out of room or I'd I'd be going balls deep. Like I usually do, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. I, I just, yeah. I just had a room. I don't have room for He's, anymore. Jason's gonna give an H2 Overdrive twin oh, cab, dude. Mark my words. Like, I don't know. Let's say like what within ten years, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll have a couple of those for sure. Let's look at um, 
I'm sure you guys are fans of Nathan Barnett or Keith Apicary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Within the past year, his arcade, his collection has gotten insane. And uh, it's funny, he actually donated his Neo Geo cab from the Neo Geo music video to Fun Spot. Oh, nice. Hmm. So oh, that's cool. cool. Yeah. They, un- they unveiled that at the tournament, which I thought was pretty neat. I, I saw him uh, on TV. He was on that one TV show where they go to like storage bins. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, like Storage was- Wars. Storage Wars. <laughs> storage Wars. Yeah. I, I heard that was staged, though. Yeah, but he picked up a Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, and it was like he paid like way too much for it. Too. Like fourteen hundred dollars. I was like cringing, and it was it wasn't even yeah. like original paint. It was like yeah, like it was like a decal, decal yeah. side. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it could have been staged. That's that's word on the street. He, he was at Disneyland when I was there. Like he passed by me a couple weeks ago. It was pretty funny. He's actually going on an arcade tour. I think in September. So oh, really? um, I think I know he's going to Ground Control. I know he's hitting up all these different places. So I'm sure he's going to come up. At least some place in your guys' area. I check him out. He's gonna have to do like a concert. It's be neat. I'm gonna beat him up when I see him. <laughs> I'm gonna beat you up, Johnny Millennium, and yeah, I'm gonna hold beat you down. You. And- hey, I'm gonna see you. All I'm I know be- is that it's going down a pack. That's all I know. Hey, I, is there gonna be poutine in Seattle? Yeah. There's gonna you know? be, yeah, yeah. Because I kind of, I'm like tempted to. Like I've, I'm kind of jealous too. I want. Well, wait a okay. second, Gamester okay. at the fucking this this um fucking cheesecake factory. Yeah. Do they have poutine? I don't think so. No, no. What a bullshit they are. See, when I went to the Cheesecake Factory in Seattle, when I went probably like eight years ago, I went for WrestleMania. That's how lame I was. Nice, but nice. <laughs> I remember I ran into like uh, Stacy Keebler there, Jacqueline, a bunch of like wrestlers were just hanging out at the Cheesecake Factory. Really? But that so, restaurant's amazing. It's so good. The they don't have that, like don't have that in the Northeast? No, not at all. Really? Mm-mm. So, okay, Tim, you know so Tim, you haven't had poutine either. No, I've never had poutine. Well, Okay. Well, yeah, we- yeah. This- <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what, guys? I got my folks. They went back east for a visit a little while ago and they bought the official Quebecois Saint Hubert's poutine sauce in the tins. I'm going to try and track down some cheese curds. And if it goes down when we come down to Seattle, four packs, uh-huh. maybe I will bring some potatoes in my deep fryer. That's oh some my cheese curds in the sauce and hand make you motherfuckers some poutine. <gasps> the Jason poutine party. party. That ain't that ain't coming in my car. <laughs> I'll, I'll empty the oil out of the deep fryer oh, first. Oh, well, okay then. Johnny, I want to play Street Fighter 4 and eat poutine at the same time. You're gonna die, pal! Medium kick. Hey, Johnny, did you get the... Rage still. Johnny, have you gotten the Street Fighter uh, 4 arcade? I did. Yeah. No, I'm gonna buy it down in Vegas so there's no French on my uh, on my box art. So that's is it out joke. yet? No, it's not. Oh, it's, you have to you have to download DLC. it. It's fifteen bucks. Yeah, so I think when I'm down there, it comes out. Doesn't it? What time? When does it come out? Do you know? I don't know if when they're doing retail because I wanted to buy retail too, and I don't. Is think it retail come out? I saw it on Amazon. Yeah, sure. the end of the month or something. I think. Yeah. So well, that's the funny thing. When I'm down, I'm going to Vegas in the morning, so I'm going to have to take off pretty soon here. But um, I'm I'm actually going to buy a bunch of games that I've been putting off because I know I'm going to Vegas. I'm, so I you know I don't have to have French in the manuals. I'm very happy about that. How'd you like that, uh, Rob, on the cover of uh, Zelda? There, what did it say? Something like, you know, or good of time, le, le formidable le version. <laughs> was there? Was there? I wasn't <laughs> looking at the cover. I was just worried about getting the game into my 3DS and playing it. Yeah, well, I was worried about the fucking cover. See, Holly sent <laughs> me a uh, dog in my lunch. She sent me a copy of Wario, like DIY, and it was like full of French all over the place. Horrible, isn't it? Well, well she's French Canadian, isn't she? Yeah, she's from Canada too. And it, I thought, yeah. was, I, see, I thought it was cool because I've never seen a game with like all a bunch of different languages all over it. No, it's not cool. Yeah. It's not cool. <laughs> I, I like the the Star Wars figures in French, like French Canadian, and you know, it's cool. Trilingual. Le Star Wars. Luke Skywalker. Ma maison elle est fromage. <laughs> now, okay, here's a, this one interesting one. Why don't you shut up, Robert? Man, <laughs> I can't even hear you. Well, you don't need to hear me. You just need to shut up, up and listen. Hey, well, that yeah, no sense. Good comeback, pal. Good comeback. <laughs> so, we'll work on it. Say, what I wanted to say to everybody is that I know we're all going to PAX. And uh, are we all going up on the Thursday? That's important to what I'm going to say. Yes. yes. Yeah, I'll be there Thursday. Yes. Well, what we should try to do is, and there's a lot more of us coming, try to talk to everybody and pick a restaurant and have everybody go for dinner that first night on the Thursday. Uh, try, to, try to arrange it because if we don't start thinking about that now, it's just going to be, we'll never get to it. So well, it sounds like better. we need to do the Cheesecake Factory. 
Yeah. In my I'm sounded down it. for that. It's across the street, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's and the place the can accommodate tons of people. That's yeah. true. But then again, me and me and John always had to sit in the bar because it was always full. But this is the day before the event starts, so it shouldn't be that bad. Yeah, it's I mean, it's gonna, be, it's, it's gonna be busy, but it shouldn't be. Like Seattle's crazy. a big place. There's lots of stuff there. Yeah, yeah. 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 after you have a nice, uh, there's a nice talk about brewery. Yeah. What's that? Just after hearing you guys talk about that restaurant, I am a, I am a food person. I love I love food. I love all kinds of food. I, I love mass quantities of food. So listening to to Johnny and you talk about Cheesecake Factory on the podcast and on videos and in person, I am dying to get into this place. Yeah, we'll head oh, it. Oh, it's, we'll it's excellent. It's so, excellent. I remember the first. By. First time I introduced it to Johnny, I'm like, you want to go to Cheesecake Factory? He's like, what? I don't want cheesecake. I'm like, no, you understand. Like, they have, like, everything. They're freaking, their menu's so big, they have advertisements in their menu. Like, literally. It's crazy. Yeah, see, I, I, like, I, didn't, I didn't believe him, because he just finished telling me, he was like, oh, I fucking hate Zelda. It's fucking gay. Yeah, that's yeah. right, and you told me that you hate <laughs> Nintendo. And it was like, like, you hate Nintendo. Yeah. I was teabagging Miyamoto or whatever. I, I you read, know, it's crazy. I don't read the Bible, but I've heard that the menu compares in size, so I don't know. It's weird. No, it is. It's freaking, they have the Genesis, like, you know, 1-1, one, one, and it was like the, you know, that would be the appetizers, you know? Yeah, it's that's crazy. crazy. Did you know wow. that they have the Buddha burger? Buddha burger? They have a Buddha burger. That's when What's they that? make you one with everything. Oh, nice. Well, what is everything? What does everything entail? Yes, I know. Pickles, cheese, lettuce, you know, all that. Stuff. Okay. It's a joke. They, they, they make Ding. one with everything. Oh. Oh, Buddha. I totally uh-huh. understand. Uh-huh. That Robert man tricks. That Robert man. He's so clever. Oh, that Robert man up to his old tricks again. Oh, that Robert man. Watch out for Robert man. Look, tricks again. Bullshit that is. So, Dude, oh, what's the fuck? A good time. I'm getting a call on Skype right now from online protection, it says. Oh, shit. Sounds legit. Should answer it. Fucking the cyber police. Yes. I seriously have <laughs> never had spam on here before. I have okay. before. I've had like hot chips. We've been the internet without a condom. Answer it. Mm-hmm. Bring them in the conversation. Yeah, okay, hold can on. you do that? Please wait for system report. Your computer ID is 17764-B. No, oh, no, it won't let me. Hmm. Uh, Oh, they've got him too. <laughs> Do you remember like, back in the day? Questions? Jason? What? Any audio questions? Yeah. I think it's getting kind of late for that, isn't it? We just done two hours. Are we? Okay. Oh, shit. Is All that right. two hours? Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Why is it yeah. well, we, Let's wait till the questions, I guess, when Pete's with us. Can I can hold off. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, Pete will have a lot to say, see? Okay, oh, yeah. shit. I'll be in line for that shit. <laughs> I fucking so love funny. that. I'll be in a lineup for that shit. Yeah, that's pretty funny that in the forums there, the uh, fan art submission. Oh, yeah, that's hilarious. I had to put my two cents in there because when I was like at work... Binks. Yeah, when I was at <laughs> work, I was listening to you guys, which is what I, what I always do every time there's a new episode, but uh, that was the two things that stuck in my head were Sega Satin and Bar Bar Drinks. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Sega Satin! Satin. 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 All I know is that chick looks real comfortable in them sheets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I gotta get in there. That's the whale was in the bed sheets. Ooh. Get it down on that shit. I miss the whale. Yeah, a lot, well, of people, a lot of people are saying, you know, where's the whale? Where's the whale? Huh? He's hibernating right now. He's chilling. Yeah, it's summertime. What the fuck? He's out. <laughs> it's a sea world and shit. Yeah. But just for old time's sake. Wait a second. He's back! Oh. I think I just got a boner. <laughs> oh, yeah. That kind of felt nice, you know? That, that felt did nice. feel nice. <laughs> it, it, feel it, nice. It, it, felt, it felt good to hear from an old friend. Yeah, it's just like a, a warm hug, you know? Uh, on a cold day. Full of poutine. <laughs> Warm me with poutine? your warm hands. Um, always been gamer. These fo- I gotta go to the forums. There's all sorts of shit always going on in here. I never yeah, see... Fine. See, you're missing out all my awesome five minute Photoshop. Oh, work. Yeah, we, we need to ping it. that. We need to ping it so it's like on the top of the list of so people. Can Actually, I just opened up my Photoshop and there's a picture of Gamester holding his hand out. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I had to screen cap you so you could hold a martini. Yeah, yeah that's, funny. <laughs> that's funny. I have like a, what, a, it's like a strawberry martini or some shit? Yeah. Yeah, it's got a little strawberry up there too. I noticed that. <laughs> nice touch. Nice touch. How'd you know? Silly goose. 
<laughs> See, I'm weird. Like, I'm not, I'm not big into beer, but I really love like margaritas and like girly drinks. Oh, you're a girl drink drunk. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not drunk though. See, like, I don't drink unless people pay for it. Like, I'm a. Oh, I'm, I'll pay for I'm it. One of those. I'll pay for you a pack. She'll be my own personal prostitute. It's like when I went on my cruise, like I, the, the margaritas were like $10. And I'm like, I can't afford that. I'm going to go to the arcade, swipe my card, and play some games. Yeah, 10 yeah. bucks go a long way in arcade, you know? Yeah, well, when you're sure. playing like yeah, Marvel vs. Street Fighter and you can just like keep beating it over and over and over, you know? Yeah. It's fun. So, games show up being Vegas tomorrow. Where should I go besides the pinball hall, you know, museum? And uh, insert coin sounds like uh, insert fucking bad nightmare. Yeah. Well, no, I think you should swing by there and do it justice and just get your own opinion of it. You know, it's 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 definitely worth swinging by. Is it really? Uh, in Las Vegas, there's a lot of really amazing things to do. So, what are you looking to do? You want to look look for games and shit, or what? Or no, I mean, you know, like I've been seven times. I don't know who I'm asking, but I'm you you've been there quite a few times as well. So yeah. I don't well, know. Like there's, we're there's, gonna shoot. There's we're gonna shoot. Of, go ahead. Fuck you. Fuck you. Go, go to go visit you, go visit Las Vegas advice. Go visit Chumley and Rick at Pawn Stars down there. Go visit them. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm doing next time I'm there. What? Do you really think you'd see those those people there though? No, because they're totally staged when they film it. Are they? Yeah, they've got to yeah. be. Yeah. Well, I well, have you, a friend. You might see Chumley and uh, Big Hoss down there. But like, uh, you guys are fans, obviously American Pickers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I had some friend. I actually have a, an arcade friend, the guy I got my uh, my Donkey Kong cab from. His father in law was on one of the episodes. He had like the barn full of old like arcade machines and stuff. And they said they sat and filmed all day for like a hot, you know, five ten minute segment. <laughs> he says a wow. lot of it was like stage, yeah. yeah. But it, it was cool though. It's gotta be, you know. It's gotta be. That's yeah. Funny. It's, Movie magic. Yeah, wow. totally. Yeah. You know yeah, all that. Exactly. You know how you guys know how it is. Everything is done in post 100%. All that mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. It's like Survivor. Like they used to like reenact the events and stuff. Fucking roll the camera. They're eating Big Macs and shit. They're like, "Oh, turn the camera <laughs> off." <What> the fuck. <laughs> so, so gamester, tell me, what would you do if you could go to Las Vegas tomorrow? If I could go to Las Vegas. Well, you, your your girlfriend's never been there before, correct? Yeah. Okay. So the bar the 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 nightlife is pretty cool. There's a whole bunch of like different clubs there. Uh, like yeah. Strippers. And, you know, what's that? Strippers, right? Oh, we're Prospect definitely doing that. Yeah, definitely take her to a strip club. But no, you know, just a mean strip. But those get really expensive. Yeah, that's the problem like, with those really shit expensive. in Vegas. Yeah. Glory holes? <laughs> there's a lot of those. Yeah, oh, that'll be there's, uh, you should do. Uh, you should do uh, beer pong. That's always fun. What? Beer pong. You know beer pong, right? Yes, I don't. Rob, Johnny, Rob, man, do you, you like know, lady boys? Lady boys? Beer, beer pong. Like lady, dude, beer pong is the game. Boy in one, and I love ladies and Please boys. tell me they play beer pong in Canada, no? Dude. They call it Beirut. No, beer pong. It's You have the, the, the triangle of cups full of yes. beer on either yes. end of the table. Yes. You have to try and throw your ping pong ball into the cup of the other guy, and if you get it, he has to pound the beer. Right. Right. Or is beer your ass? Oh, that they was, have uh, they have uh, they have tournaments like, there at the strip. I think it's so Riley's or it's something like some some bar over there on the main strip. However, the the big world finals that they're doing of beer pong uh, in the near future, they are going to have everything but the beer. Yeah. And now it's hey, on the news today that the finals are going to have cups full of water. Really? That's stupid. Which kind of defeats the purpose of water beer pong. pong. Yeah. But we play we we play with water too though because people don't like want to get like hair and. Crust and lint in their beer. Yeah. Well, so they need to suck water? up. And up. <laughs> well, it's like because when the ball jump like hits the ground and rolls underneath like a bureau, and then they pull it out and it's all full of dust, then you drop it in the beer. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know that's that's how you play the game. It's a man sport. Be a man. Right. Of course, then again, you should be using something more than three percent beer, but that's just coming from Canada. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's true. Hey, hey, Johnny, definitely take her to uh, like a um, Circus Olay act. Yeah, we're going to do that. That's going to happen. Which one are you going to go to? Do you know? Well, the one with all the naked men. Like, um, I was the one that suggested that. I was like, well, there's this one, you know, there's animals. And I'm like, how about humanity. the naked men? How about the naked men swimming in the water? Oh, take like, her to Thunder from Down Under. She'll love it. What about the Beatles one? Yeah, love is good. That's a good one. I've been to that. No. So, the one thing that we are going to do, we're going to shoot fucking a bunch of automatic weapons when we're down there. We're looking forward to that. Looking forward. We're going to shoot a Desert Eagle. Um, we're going to shoot, the, like, I think, the largest sniper rifle in the world. That's something else I'm dying to do. There's no respawn in real life, just to let you know. What? 
<laughs> I'm like, Rob, just stand there. You'll be fine. You'll respawn. <laughs> Everything's going to be okay. Pac-Man? I'm already doing that. You know, the kind of thing is I've been there. I, when's the last time you were at the Luxor Hotel, John? Uh, stayed in Luxor or just visited Luxor? No, no, you just were there. When was the last time you were there? Probably like a month ago. Okay, do they still have that 3D ride there? Where they take you through the pyramids? Do you remember that? I don't remember seeing it. But they, it doesn't mean it's not it's not there. It doesn't mean it's not I, there. Well, I remember I, I I haven't done that ride for about ten years, and I remember I did it three times in a row. It was fucking amazing. I I don't know if it was still there. Okay, I'll check it out. What we're gonna do the first day is just walk around the strip, get reacquainted, yeah, sure. and uh, and then and then start booking a couple of things here and there. Do do the guns the next day, mm-hmm. type of thing. I just, I'm, I'm dying to shoot guns. I I can't tell you. Check out Circus Circus, though, the arcade there. They have a, no, a zero that cap. Place is the biggest gang ridden place I've ever not been to. Not anymore, seen. dude. I was there last week and it was not bad. I almost got raped there, honestly. No, Sounds like a party. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, yeah, but, you know, when I, when I was there, it was just, you know, whenever Circus Circus anywhere sucks. I remember the one in Reno is a really trashy one. And the one one down there is just in Vegas was just, I, I don't know, so many shady characters, like so many drugged, drugged up people. Like, I don't know. New I don't York, New York has a pretty cool arcade upstairs. Yeah, that'd oh, be nice. Yeah. That'd yeah. be bad. Yeah. Is the Sega arcade still there, right? By the MGM? Yeah, GameWorks is there. GameWorks, yeah, yeah still there. Do all that. So, Pinball yeah. Hall of Fame. Pinball I'm Hall of Fame, definitely do that, yeah. I've got to hit that up. I really want to hit that up someday. It's really yeah. cool. Tim, you like it a lot. Have you seen, um, this is, there's a documentary out there, you might have not seen it, uh, GameStar. It's on, uh, I think it's on Hulu, but uh, it's called Special When Lit. Now it's about pinballs. It's all about pinball. You'll That's freaking cool. love it. They, they they showcase that place a lot. What's it called? Uh, Special Win Lit. It's on Hulu. And sorry, Canadians, yeah. you can't watch it. Ah, fuck Is you. Hulu free or not? Yes, it's free. Okay, I can hook it up. There's a lot of really good. Uh, Send me a link. Send me a link to it. I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, I've watched it a couple times. It's really good. It's awesome. Cool. All right, guys. Well, I know Johnny got to get going here because he's got to wake up early and go to Vegas. Yeah, it's gonna suck. It's gonna be horrible times. Damn, it's gonna suck. It's great because you and Jason are coming up to see us, right? No, nah, I won't. I won't be able to be there, man. What the hell are you talking about? Well, we sat down and we 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 talked it over, and we were like, we realized you're gonna be there, so we, there's no way yeah. we're going. Well, you know the thing is, I'll be wearing my Zelda shirt, and that's like a repellent to John, right? I know. <laughs> and yeah. you know I fucking hate Zelda. I hate Zelda. Yeah. I fucking hate that shit. What's well, all good though, because you know Pax is just right around the corner. So yeah, yeah it's only like three months away or something. You know, yeah. I want to be there, Spirit Man, but uh, I just it's not gonna work out. So I, I just know that you don't care. It's fine. It's okay. It's not that I hate Zelda. It's just I hate you, honestly. That's I can handle that. But the <laughs> Zelda thing makes me tear up at night. I'm naked in bed through my George Lucas impersonations. He hated Fantasy hate, Star. Would you still Fantasy like Star. him? Um, probably. I probably. I probably. This is limp cock. I can't handle. Fantasy Star Online 2, anyone? Mm-hmm. Just, just eat a lot of pizza and all, all sorts of junk food for me. Yeah. That sounds yeah. nice. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So, um, you've been to, hey, John, you've been to Chipotle before, right? Have I been? Yeah. No. Chipotle, you've heard of Chipotle? Uh, 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 games. Don't they put it in mayonnaise and shit? No, it's just a chain of, of like Mexican food chain. They have one on the strip. Definitely check it out. It's pretty good. Good burritos. Okay. Do you got Chipotle away, whatever that Ch- stuff is? Chipotle. Chipotle away. Chipotle away. Yeah, that's I'm, right. I'm getting hungry. That's all I know. Yeah, I know. Make himself- yeah. Hey, um, so, like, the best place to get, like, tickets for those shows is, like, on the strip, isn't it? Yeah, they have, they have like, yeah, ticket deals on the strip, yeah. That's where I'm going to get them. Those are the best places. And, and don't forget the, the porn shit that they hand out, too, on the strip. You know okay, the- okay. This is, this, I got to say, chime in about when... The last time I was there, I was a lot younger. I was there with my parents. The time after that, I was there for business, and I didn't do the strip. I flew over it, though. But um, when I was there with my parents, it was like fucking gold. There I am, a young kid, and there's these young Mexican men giving me porn. Yeah. Hey, Sonny, take this, take this, take this. And I'm like, I was with my parents, and my parents are like, don't don't do it. Don't, Don't take it. Just don't look at them. Don't look at them. And, and I, I'm looking and I'm seeing, and this is before the internet, right? Like pretty well. And they're showing, like, all I see is these flyers with this beautiful pornography. And I was like, oh, oh, I want it so bad. I so wanted it for the hotel room so I could take it to the bathroom. You know what I mean? You know? When my parents are down at the pool, I can have my own fucking Las Vegas hoo-ha. You know? But I was denied. 
<laughs> I was fucking, I had to say, no, it's hideous. Don't give it to me. Stop it now. I don't like that pornography stuff. You know, but this time I'm fucking bringing a shopping cart for that shit. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Johnny wants to have a Johnny wants a little quality time with the one on bandit. See, yeah, I'm like, so, uh, girlfriend, uh, why don't you go shopping at the China shop? I'm just going back to the hotel room with this, you know, crate of pornography. I'm going to go watch a new <laughs> show <laughs> called Rosie Palm. See, new Rosie show. Palm. You know, what you see? call it you call her uh, Pamela Henderson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All of these. Totally, but can't wait to get that. For anybody who hasn't been to Vegas, if you're going down the strip, it's terrible. Actually, just have these guys hand you pornography. Like, right, it's not horrible. I'm just kidding. But they're handing. But it's so weird. You don't have that anywhere else in the world. You know, you're just walking down the street with your kids, and all of a sudden, these guys are giving your kids porn. Like, we're talking like six year old kids. They don't give a fuck. Like, here, take it. This is a true story. I was walking in the strip and there's this mom with her stroller, like a young baby. And the fucking guys just throw shit in the, in the stroller for the baby yeah. to grab. Like, really? So <laughs> the baby was probably fucking whacking it after that. Oh, yeah. The baby was playing with it for sure. Yeah. He's fucking, oh, that's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. He was in the lineup. I'm for thirsty. That. I'm thirsty. Oh, what's the mom oh, like? <laughs> oh, disgust. I can't so believe you would say such a thing about children. <laughs> oh. That's oh. That's Oh, I thought it was a kid or something on here. (laughs) Well, have fun in Vegas, Johnny. Thank you. I I will. It'll be a good time. I'm going to be gone for a week, so. Um, Yes. When do you get back? uh, I come back on the Sunday night, but uh, I took the Monday off work, so I'll be hanging out for a bit. I heard they're replacing you on the podcast because you know. Sounds good. Good. I got my (laughs) Tuesdays free again. Robert Man's taking over. Can have it. (laughs) Robert, man, you can be on the podcast now. Yeah, there you go. Really? Yeah, you yeah. can be on. You can be on Operation Kill Screen now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 is that an invite? It's an invite. That's an official invite. I heard Everyone's it. welcome. It's listen, listen. I, there's a very. I, I don't care who's on the podcast. Anyone who's passionate about games. Anyone who wants to talk about games. Pete Door. Pete Door. <laughs> One word. Pete Door. <laughs> nah, see, I, I don't know. See, we, we've had a lot of different people on our podcast. Like, there's a lot of people I have no idea who they are. But, you know, Holly for a while was like our booker. So I was like, you know, if they like games and they're passionate about it, you know, I'll, I'll yeah. dig some dirt out of them. And, you know, so far we've had some great guests besides Cataclysm. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You, you actually got her on there? Right after that video broke, we got her on. That's nice. Oh, God. How did you yeah. refrain from beating her with a s- stick? She's very, very nice. Like she, she means well. And you can tell she was like really hurt about the whole thing. But then she was like trying to capitalize on on the whole cataclysm thing. But um, she's she's just I don't know trying to get stuff out of her was like you know I don't know. <laughs> it, it just was very hard to get anything out of oh her. And anything- I was so totes upset about it, and it was totes like totes brutal. I had to totally blog about it. It was just unbelievable. But everything you'd ask her was Resident Evil. Like it seemed yeah, like the only game that. she's ever played was Resident I Evil. I love really hard. Resident Evil. But no, she's a nice girl and more power to it. But I think her five minutes of fame is unfortunately over. You see that crazy cat girl? Oh God! Went viral. Oh my God! Yeah. Harmony. I heard that's yeah. fake though. It's fake, yeah, but it's fun. Oh, yeah. what, what's what's the deal? She's like, I love cats. Cat. I'm just, I'm just so, I'm so much. You know, it's like, what the fuck? I'm sitting here like, I got a cat. What the fuck? She has to make like, my nose off. I'm thinking she's like, just like pussy or what? I'll show her the real pussy, yeah. What's that? Just, wait, what's that? <laughs> what happened to her? She got raped? She sat at home <laughs> and stroked her pussy and cried. I think it's funny. I think it's funny how anything that goes on, Johnny's like, wait, someone get raped? <laughs> well, I thought raped? that's what you were talking about. You said somebody's pussy, there was something no. in it. She, she was an eHarmony video. It's, it's there. Just she, she was crying. She's, uh, yeah, so she's, she's acting. She's like talking about eHarmony. She's like, I like this. And she's like, I love cats. And she like, starts getting all emotional. She's like, I just love cats so much. I just, you know, she's all crazy about cats. I cry over Sega. And uh, it's Robert like, Man cries over Mega Man. And then, you if know, you guys want a really good video of it, actually go to our forums. There's a post in there. Someone posted it. And then Henry Blazer did a follow up video about it, imitating yeah. it. It's really funny, too. So you guys yeah. can check it out. It had like 9 million hits. Oh, my oh, God. Shit. I didn't know that. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Cha-ching. It's crazy how things like that go viral. It's like nuts. 
Like and Rebecca Black. She took that shit yeah. down, though. She, she took making, that shit down, yeah. Why? Yeah, she's making so much fucking money why on that make, why'd she Why'd she take it down? I don't know, but I would well, never take it down. There's, 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 no, there's, because, there's a fight between yeah. her and the record company over who has the rights to it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it's, oh, come really? to that, it's come to that point now, right? Making that much making money, so huh? much money, yeah. Yeah. It's Friday, Friday. Friday get so get anyone, who, no. anyone who rhymes the word bowl, bowl with cereal? Gotta get bowl, gotta stop. get cereal. <laughs> just stop, just stop, just stop. <laughs> English language has died. Yeah, English language has died. Yeah, but over. tomorrow is Monday. Then the next yeah. day is Tuesday. Well, what, did she, what did she say? He's like, we're in the front seat, a back seat. I don't know which one to get in. Friends I don't know. In the front seat. These my other Wait. friends in the back seat. <laughs> There's another one too. The There's another like uh, rich rich girl parent video about proms. I haven't seen what? it though, but I've heard about it. Well, the pants the are best, up for that the, shit. The best video version of that Friday song was the one that they got Stephen Colbert to sing it on the Jimmy Fallon show. Wow. But that oh yeah, Fallon. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. That was brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Yeah. Did he do like his Neil Young impression or something? No, he just he sang the song. Stephen Colbert, deadpan, straight faced, s- sarcastic as fuck version of the song. It was brilliant. That <laughs> sounds brilliant. It's the only way I can listen. Don't so, I mean the big question though is would you? No. But I what? Yeah. What are you saying? Would you? You're fine. Would you do her? I'm just curious. That's the question everyone wants to know. Rebecca Black? Well, how old is she? Uh, she's Young. jailbait. <laughs> <laughs> she's, thir- she's 13 years old. <laughs> really? Yes. I had no idea. Yeah, Dude. you hit that. Better erase Jason. your history, sicko. We gotta keep in mind, this is, this is Jason who's got the gaming girls who, you know, the big fat gaming girls who, who hook up with him. <laughs> I, know how, I know how to treat him and please him. <laughs> you about, yeah, maybe you're talking about some watermelons or something with the other one or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was I Voltron's face. It looked all fucked up. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, boys, I gotta get the fuck out of here. All right, Johnny, have fun in Vegas. Bro. Have we'll a great time in Vegas. See you later, everybody. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. Have, have fun, you. buddy. La, 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 bring la, la, bring la, la, me la. back a drug little, drug riddled hobo. A drug. Oh, I want a drug riddled hobo. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm just gonna go because I can keep on making jokes. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye. Johnny. Goodbye. Have fun. Take care. Talk soon. <laughs> awesome. Well, guys, uh, thanks for being on the podcast. Not a problem. Yeah, it's been fun, you know. Thank you very, very much for having me. Uh, always it's a pleasure. Been, you've got three other channels, right? You're kind of like me. We, we're, uh, we got a ton of channels. So We're YouTube whores. I guess. That's what they call us. <laughs> if you want to call us that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, you guys can find me on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Jumble Junkie. That's, that's really the only one you guys really need to know. That's, that's all gaming. That's like my, my Mr. Sock show I do. My skits. Uh, my video game reviews. And I do a lot of arcade stuff. So if you guys are into arcades, check me out. And then uh, my website, Operation killstream.com for the podcast and then jumblejunkie.com for the hub for all that is jumble junkie everything you're on facebook and uh, all that good stuff too. facebook twitter tumblr i'm everywhere i really love tumblr do tumblr cool needs to catch on it's, it's a great little yeah. blogging tool but it's it's a good way to network things and we've been using it on our podcast it doesn't really caught quite caught on yet but like my personal one um it, it's just fun like you know if you find something cool like a picture or a video or something it's just a different yeah. way to to interact and then other people reblog it and you know ultimately that's how you get you know views and mm-hmm. stuff so it's cool that's cool and Raman, who are you in case people don't know who you are uh co-host on happy console gamer which is uh www.youtube.com slash happy console gamer um and basically that's that's where you'll find me i have a youtube channel of my own that i don't actually have any videos on as of yet uh there is potential someday that i might put them up if you know if when where and how but uh, that's uh, ha- youtube.com slash robmanhcg. I'm also on Facebook. And uh, otherwise, I'm at work and spending time with my family. Nice. The right thing to do. <laughs> yeah, honestly and truly, I took Giles advice. I went home and was a family man. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. So, Rob, right. thank you guys so much for having me on again. I, I really appreciate any chance I get to get on and chat and tell dick jokes and all the good stuff. No, it's been fun. We'll do it again for sure. 
And Tim, thanks for coming on last minute. And same with you, Rob. I know it was kind of last minute. We called you both. I'm like, hey, you guys, do you want to hop on? <laughs> so I'm a two timer on the All Gen Gamers podcast. That's right. That. That's every right. bloody else. I love the All Gen Gamer podcast. I can truly say I've listened to every episode. Wow. wow. Yep. Same here. Wow. I, I am a loyal fan. Like a lot of people, I've said this, I think, the last time I was on. Like a lot of people you guys have on clearly have never listened to you guys before. Right. But. No, I love it. It's it's good stuff. You guys are the longer the better. It makes my days at work go by fast. We, we have uh, we have a lot of fun doing it. So definitely, definitely. I have a and lot of right. I have a lot of fun editing it. <laughs> no, the editing dude. Oh, I, I seriously, I feel your pain because editing is the most painful shit. That's exactly what I did when I got home today. I'd edit mine and upload it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's all good though. It's fun though. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I, I drive everywhere. I drive with work. As I have to drive all over the lower mainland uh, for my service calls and stuff, my iPod always has one of the episodes of All Gen Gamers. I just go through the old ones when I run out if the new one's nice. done, and it, I just I, I, I'm always talking to my radio. People think I'm nuts, but I'm just <laughs> I'm talking in stereo all the time. Well, you find add some sense. Operation Kill Screen in there, Robert Man. Hey, any old time, boss. You know what? I'll, I'll start downloading and listening. And uh, anytime you've got some free airspace, let me know. Hell's yeah, mofo. Sweet. And I, I'm also um, really happy to be here on the podcast. Really <laughs> <laughs> excited. Hail to the king, baby. Well, well it's been real. Stupid. <laughs> oh, straight this? No, you did. No, you didn't. No, it's been fun. No.